And good evening, everyone. Welcome back to some more Mariners baseball. This is the Rooftop Sports, and we got our friend Steve. And boy, what a road trip that was as the Mariners struggled with only two victories. Yep. I believe that means they went two and five in that road trip overall. Wait, two and five or two and four? Two and I, uh, awesome. two. Well, let's see. They had three in Milwaukee, three in uh, Toronto. So two so and six. No, two and four. So they went two and four in that road trip. It was very difficult, but at least they ended it with a victory and at least scoring six runs. And hopefully they can carry that momentum going against a tough team called the Chicago Cubs. And Steve, how are you today? Oh, I'm excellent. Uh, I'm ve I'm very excellent. And you you mentioned that uh, you know the offense was able to come alive a couple days ago. It it uh, it was unfortunate that you know they scored the most runs they've ever scored in a game, and it came in extra innings, but. I guess better late than never. Um, you you kind of like to see that, especially with Cal Raleigh uh, doing damage against the Toronto Blue Jays, which he uh, which he seems to own. Uh, and it was nice seeing Cal uh, put a good you know put a good charge in the ball. Um, a lot of a lot of good things happened in that tenth inning, uh, which was uh, you know which was very uh, encouraging to see. And you're just kind of hoping hopefully there's going to be some carryover uh, into tonight's game against Chicago. Not exactly the greatest series for the Mariners, but it's not it's not exactly impossible that the Mariners can get their first series win. Uh, it starts tonight against Jordan Wicks, uh, uh, you know, a lefty that, uh, you know, he does throw the sink uh, and, you know, it's it's his strikeout pitch. But, you know, the one thing about Jordan Wicks is he has the ability ability to expand the strike zone. His best pitch is a change. And so uh, if Mariner, you know, if Mariner, uh, you know, if the you know, Mariner hitters are looking for fastball, chances are pretty good. They're not going to get one. Uh, so they're what they're going to have to do is they're you're, they're going to have to hope that maybe Wicks uh, isn't, you know, isn't sharp. And he kind of, you know, drops a change up over the plate. Maybe they can do some damage that way. But I think it's imperative that uh, if, you know, if they are a little aggressive, uh, they'll be able to take uh, take advantage of Wicks tonight. That's the you know, that's the hope. Yeah, absolutely. Because like we saw that Jordan Wicks doesn't really throw much fastballs. Yeah. He throws more everything more in like the breaking stuff and the change up. And we got Bryce Miller yeah. where the yeah. fortunate thing is he has made some adjustments last season. He threw 58% as a fastball, but this time it's 37%. So he is yeah. mixing it up and he yeah. is going to have to mix it up because look at this team that they've got. They've got a pretty good offensive team. In the Chicago Cubs, they've got yep. Hap, Suzuki, yep. Bellinger, Dansby Swanson. Yep. Like they've got guys on that team. Yeah, and and you know, and it's unfortunate because the Chicago Cubs, and as we saw last year early in the season when the Mariners went out to Wrigley, uh, and you saw what the Cubs were able to do against the fastball. Uh, they they like it early. They they're aggressive against it early. You know, the difference is is uh, you know Bryce Miller. He still will use that fastball to try to get ahead. But you know, especially versus left-handed uh, left-handed hitters, guys like Hap, guys like um, uh, Cody Bellinger, uh, you know, he's got the split now, which is uh, you know, which you know is a very good out pitch for him against left-handed hitters. Uh, and of course, you know, he's got the slider versus right-handers, and and that's going to be the you know for me tonight. That's that's the you know the beginning and the end of story for Bryce Miller. It's not the fastball. It's is he going to have slider command versus righties? Uh, and is he going to be able to have a uh, have a tight split versus lefties? Because if he is, we saw what he did in his last start in Milwaukee. Uh, he was absolutely brilliant. Uh, and, you know, that's, you know, that's, you know, the Bryce Miller that, you know, fans get pumped up to see because, you know, when he's on, he's about as good as anybody in our rotation. And he, we have seen it. We've seen it in his first three yeah. games of his career. He was absolutely lights out. So, that's the Bryce Miller we're going to need, and we're especially going to need that kind of Bryce Miller along with a good offense because tomorrow is going to be Emerson Hancock against the Japanese star, yep. and then you got a struggling Luis Castillo. So at least winning this game will be critical. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I you know tomorrow is going to be the the interesting game. I know that you know I know that Castillo has been struggling, but you know Castillo. If there's anybody, if there's anybody that knows. Uh, how, you know how you know how to get over that it's going to be Castillo typically not a not you know a fast starter in his career uh so if there's you know I I have a feeling that you're going to start seeing Castillo kind of clean things up a little bit and get some of his command back but to me it's Emerson Hancock because you know there's been a lot of trash being talked about Emerson Hancock about how he's not he doesn't have the stuff and the command to be a major league pitcher 
I, and I, you know, he's coming off one of the worst starts I think I've ever seen uh, by a Mariner starter in a very long time. So I would like to see Emerson rebound tomorrow. It's going to be a tall task because Imanaga is, you know, one of the best pitchers in baseball right now. Uh, that's going to be a tough one for the Mariner offense, but you're absolutely right. Tonight versus Wicks, uh, this is, you know, you, you got to get off to a good start in the series because, you know, so far the Mariners have yet to win a, uh, you know, a series, a season series. So, yeah, they haven't. Yeah. And the series that, that should have been one was absolutely that Milwaukee series because had the Mariners won the first yep. two games, at least the last game, we could have said more comfortably, oh, that, that was just a bad day, but they didn't. Yep. And Emerson Hancock, what's been concerning is his velocity seems to be lost. So that is not really helping. So you can't makes it hard for him to for for him to be able to mix up between a fastball and his changeup. So yep. hopefully Emerson Hancock can figure that out, especially against another offensive heavy team. Yeah, and, and I think tonight, uh, specifically for the Mariner offense, there's two guys that absolutely need to have a phenomenal game, and that's Julio Rodriguez. Uh notoriously slow starter i mean i know that i, I know that in, in especially the last couple of games he's hit the ball hard uh and i guess that's a positive sign but he's also still showing signs of you know, of chasing and the other guy is going to be mitch garber you know mitch you know you know he this is the that's probably the one guy that desperately needs to have a good game uh so look for those two guys to to you know to potentially show out tonight and let's take a look at the lineups for the mariners we've got J.P. Crawford leading off. Julio Rodriguez, Ty France as a third batter. Mitch Hanniger, Jorge Polanco, Mitch Garver, Cal Raleigh all the way to seven. Very interesting. Yep. Yep. Dylan Moore and Luis Urias. Not the biggest fan of this lineup because I would like to see Cal Raleigh at least above Garver. But man, did they make that adjustment on Jorge Polanco. Yeah, I, I wasn't surprised to see Dylan Moore and Luis Urias in versus the lefty. The, the surprise is Ty France batting third. You and I both agree that uh, Julio Rodriguez should probably be in the three spot. Polanco batting, you know, batting second. They really but, should. Uh, the stats really do back it up. You know, I, I guess when you look at the batted ball data, Ty France is is still the best hitter in the Mariner lineup. So you 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 think with Hanniger hitting behind him, maybe that might help him a little bit, and Julio hit in front of him. Maybe we'll see, you know, you know, see Ty pop one out tonight. But the reality is, um, you know, overall Cal Raleigh has not really been hitting the ball well. Same thing with Garver. So you know, you know, Service decided to move him down a little bit in the lineup. But um, yeah, this is uh, I, I I tend to agree with you. This is a this is an odd lineup. It's very odd, and I don't. And it seems like a very overthought lineup. And just I just saw the footages. They were showing montage of Julio Rodriguez and Ken Griffey Jr. Yep. alongside of each other. And crazy yep. thing is Julio Rodriguez is off to a quicker start than Ken Griffey Jr. in terms of at least home runs and batting average is about the same. So hopefully we can see in the future that Julio will develop into the one of the more premium stars of this team. And yeah. looks like they are uh, looks like they are taking the field. And it, it is Trident night. It is the Nike Connect night. So Trident's up. The city connects. Yeah, the city connects. Uh, by the way, first and foremost, stop with the stop with the Ken Griffey Jr. comparisons. Julio Rodriguez is not junior, and he will never be junior. Uh, and, and and okay, so fine. He's you know he's a little he's a little ahead pace, but you know with the Ken, I mean Junior retired with six, you know six hundred home runs in his career. Uh, you know he had a, a, 50, a couple fifty home run seasons. You know. Until uh, in, until Julio can prove that he can he can perform from start to finish, I don't want to hear it. Oh, and by well, the way, a flick of the flick of the switch in the in the chat room, the over under for strikeouts tonight, it better not be fifteen. Yeah, they should. I wonder <laughs> if there, there's a betting line on that. And Chris, how's it going? Thanks for joining. And looks like more and more fans are coming in, so that will be great. And it looks like they're showing Bryce Miller's stuff and. A lot of people can say what they want about Apple, but I really do like how they present it. Maybe I don't like necessarily their personalities, but I do like how their visual presentation. Like they really don't disappoint with that. I got to be honest with you. I've never seen a, I've, I've never seen an Apple uh, broadcast. So this is going to be new for me. Um, but um, yeah, I have no, like who are, by the way, who are their commentators? Is it like what the, Matt, 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 Matt Vaskersian and, I don't know. The killer guy is Don Charles Willis, the man with the weird oh, yeah. windup. Yeah, yeah, the D train. Yeah, the D train. Yeah, yep. 2003 Marlins, and now it looks like we've got 
Ian Happ, he is up to bat right now, and this is going to be brought to you by the first pitch, will be brought to you by SeatGeek. And now here's the pitch, and now here's a fly ball to right field and looks playable. We've got Hanniger. He is there. He makes the catch, and that was a very towering pop-up, and we got mm -hmm. one down. SeatGeek, use Rooftop Sports for $20 off. We got two games coming up. We got a big home stand. Also save $20 to get that Ken Griffey Jr. bobblehead for the Cincinnati Reds. So use my promo code to save your 20 bucks on food. Yeah. You know what? Uh, why am I not surprised that the uh, Chicago Cubs come out swinging? Yeah. You know, they are first pit team, aren't they? Yep. First pitch fastball and uh, you know, half takes a cut. And uh, that is going to be a ball. You got pregame total eight. What is, I don't know what that is. And that is Suzuki. He is off to a good start. He has 12 RBIs batting 298. 12 RBIs. And you know, we're a week into the season. That's uh, a week. That's, that's not, pretty insane. Yeah. That's if that's not a hard, hot start. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Suzuki through 91 games by 249 he's been on fire since august 8th of 2023 so he's going to try to keep that going and here is the pitch and that is fouled away and that is going to be a 2-1 count to suzuki his reach his on base reaching probability says 34 percent. it's really interesting how apple comes up with all these analytics and put them all together in presentation and now we are yeah. looking at <laughs> the 2-1 pitch and here it is and that is fouled away, and that was hit off of the mask of Cal Raleigh. No Sebi Savala, and looks like there's Craig Council, 10th season as a manager from Milwaukee and Chicago. Yep. If you're wondering yep. who Craig Council is, he's the man with the very <laughs> abnormal batting stance, but it was catchy to look at at least. Yeah, but it was also effective as well, too. If you remember K uh, Craig Council as a player, that dude get hit a little bit. And now here's a pop-up, and that is going to go to J.P. Crawford, and he makes the catch, and we got two down so far. There he goes. Quick quick two outs, and it doesn't look like, uh, it doesn't look like uh, uh, Miller is uh, wasting too many pitches. He's going right after him. He's, he is going right after them. And now we've got the big boy. We've got Cody Bellinger, which some Mariner fans, including myself, say that we should have got him because they got him on a he, the Cubs got him on the cheap to extend him. So we'll see how Bellinger does. He's now batting 191, and that is going to be a strike. And that was an 81 mile an hour. It looks like that was a splitter. Seven pitches in for Miller so far. He has two home runs, 10 RBIs. That is Cody Bellinger batting 191. He bats well against the Mariners usually. <laughs> And now here is the pitch, and that is outside for a ball. We are looking at a one and one count. He is Bryce Miller is mixing it up this time. He does not want to go right sure. after Miller, but look at in T-Mobile has three homers, a one point four OPS, so yeah. he will be dangerous. Yeah, he can. Now hit here's here. the pitch, and that is a pie for a ball. Looks like Miller's just trying to pitch a little bit away from him, trying to get him to chase things. Yeah, but you know, if you notice on the uh, the first offering was a split low in the way. That's going to be his bread and butter. Uh, yeah, but of course, you're going to try to stay away from Cody Bellinger as much as possible. The last thing you want to do is let him pitch. And that is inside for a ball three and one. That was a 96 mile an hour fastball. I wonder if either Miller's just going to take the walk or is he going to go right after him or try to get some breaking stuff on him? And we'll find out in just moments. And now here's the three one pitch, and that is ball four, kind of predictably. So that will be a base on ball for Cody Bellinger. We got a man on first. Napoli, the first base coach. That must be Mike Napoli. Still nothing, nothing so far. Up to the plate is going to be Morrill. Morrill is batting 298 right now. Now here's the pitch. And that is a strike. That was a nice little fastball right there. Absolutely. Christopher Morrill with three home runs, 10 RBIs. This is a this is a stacked Cubs offense, it looks like. Here's the pitch, and that is low for a ball. Anyone who's wondering how the Cubs are doing this season, they are now 7-5, and five, two games behind the surprising leading Pittsburgh Pirates. Yeah, you know, but I think they just uh they they're coming off a series loss uh as well too. I think they lost two out of three to the uh Padres. 
And that is a swing and a miss. And now it's going to be strike two. Now you can notice that Bryce Miller did go much more aggressive, is going much more aggressively on Christopher Morrill. Yep. He is plays. Looks like he plays mostly in center field, playing third base this season, it seems. And now here is going to be the pitch. And that is outside for a ball. Morrill is third base. Yep. Cody Bellinger is center field. Craig yep. Council, they're showing him on the camera, who has <laughs> been a part of two World Series victories, and he scored on both of those yep. runs. Florida Marlins. Here is the 2 2 and a swing and a miss. Strike three, and that will retire the side. Very smooth inning for Bryce Miller. We go to the bottom of the first. It is going to, it is nothing, nothing, and a quick word. SeatGeek is a mobile ticketing app for sporting events, concerts, and other events. They make the buying experience easier by the app ranking each ticket from 0 to 10 to see if you are getting a good deal, and you can see exactly where you are sitting. I regularly use that app, and I have had nothing but a fantastic experience with SeatGeek. Use my promo code ROOFTOPSPORTS to get $20 off of your first purchase. Link to the code, app, and website will be in the description, so take advantage, and thank you. Yep, use that SeatGeek promo code. I don't think I really have to say much because I've already said it. Thoughts on that first inning, Mr. Steve? Uh, I, I thought that uh, I thought Bryce pitched well, um, you know, not not wasting a lot of time going right after hitters. I mean, granted, yes, he did issue a walk to Cody Bellinger, but, you know, you know, you it's the uh, path of least resistance. The one thing you don't want to do is uh, give up any damage to a guy like that. So it's it's safe to put him on first, go after Morell, And he did struck him out with that nice little fastball inside on the hands and uh, you got to tip your cat to him. He's uh, he looks like his his pitches are dialed in so far in the first inning, and so far it seems that he is most likely the best pitcher right now, aside from Logan Gilbert. But we're hoping to see George Kirby and Luis Castillo and Emerson Hancock do any better. And they're still showing commercials of sewing. They're showing the mattress commercial. Looks like I got a, a Budweiser commercial going on. Oh, Budweiser, the the Anheuser beers, Busch, Beachwood aged. They call it piss water. Yeah, that that's because it is piss. Um, it also gives you a headache too. So you know, pick your poison. I'll stick with. Actually, I don't really drink at all. But if I do ever, my favorite beer of all time is Blue Moon. Oh yeah, dude, you can't go wrong. Blue Moon. Uh, you know what I actually enjoy? I do enjoy uh, Miller High Life, the champagne of beers. That's kind of nice. Rainier, oh. gotta go local. Well, it used to be local, but yeah. Oh, it's not. You. Oh, no, they they were bought my Miller years ago. <laughs> flick of a switch says Mad. Flick of a switch says Mad Dog twenty twenty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you want, uh, yeah, if you want to wake up with one of the worst headaches ever, Mad Dog twenty twenty. With the fireball chaser, I, chaser, dude, you are savage, Flick. He is savage, and now here is the pitch to Crawford. And he swings at it's going to be a foul ball. Crawford is as an 0-1 count going against him. Right now he is batting 140. He can he's really got to get that picking up. Yeah, and you expect him to. Uh, you know that's one the, strike two. You know last year was an outlier season for him. Typically, uh, you know I wouldn't say he's a slow starter. I wouldn't say he's a fast starter. But last year was was the outlier year where he started fast and then came alive in the second half. You would think with a you know with a guy you know who who can hit the way he can hit will eventually pick it up. JP Crawford, one forty two homers and five RBIs, has a point four nine two OPS. Got to get that going. And now here's the pitch, <laughs> and that is low for a ball. Crawford just tucks the ball away. And we're looking at a one, two Julio is on deck. We're looking for him to at least get his first home run in somehow in some way, because he hasn't gotten any so far. And now here's the pitch and that is foul. He kind of swung it with just like one hand. That kind of looked funny. And they're showing some more ads. Oh, they're just showing uh Jordan Wicks and his pitches. He's got a four seamer, which he uses 48% of the time. Yep. 18% and 18%. Obviously that was off of that Savant website. Absolutely. Season with two strikes is batting 0.083. Not good. Here's the pitch. And that is up high for a ball. Two and two. Crawford is really working the count well on this one. I, I, I will give him that. So even if he strikes out, it still took quite a bit of pitches to get him out. 
It looks like time is called by the umpire. That was time on JP Crawford. Yeah, and you can see you can see Wicks, you know, tried to get him fishing with the changeup earlier in the count, didn't go for it. And now he's just, you know, he's just up there fouling off pitches. Two, two. Now here's a ground ball right to the second baseman to throw the first, and that is in time. But at least JP yeah. Crawford did it at least took multiple pitches to do it. So I'm not gonna be too upset. <laughs> and now we've got Julio Rodriguez up to bat, and I must say it again. The man has got to step up. He really does. Well, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and I said it right at the beginning, top of the broadcast, if there's two guys that desperately need to have a uh, a very good game, it's, you know, Julio. How about a, you know, how about a, a two home run night for Julio? Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, how's it going? Having fun with North Northwest Sports Fanatics as well. Here's the pitch. And now here's a fly ball to center field and Bellinger is there. He makes the catch, and that is two down already. I like yeah. the aggressiveness of that swing. It looked kind of promising, but, hey, we got the thick air here in Seattle. Yeah, no, no. That's funny. Yeah, the marine the, the marine, the marine layer myth. Marine layer of death. It yeah. was a nice swing, but just a little bit under it. Now here's Ty France, Mr. Driveline workout client. Now here's the pitch. And check swing. He did go. Nope, he did not. Look at the switch. Says, "How about Julio just gets a hit?" <laughs> well, well you know the you know the thing about Julio's swing right there on a one zero count. He did get a fastball down, and I'll tell you what. Uh, I would I would be kind of curious to see what uh, see what the uh, the exit velo on that one is because that was that wasn't a bad swing. It was not. He got ex yeah, he got fully extended. Camera showing Scott service in his. Sweatshirt. He is a six twenty one to five eighty six winning per uh, winning. Well, record. Here's the pitch, and check swing, and that's fouled. And much of those wins, unfortunately, much of those winning seasons, only one made the playoffs. <clears throat> yeah, I don't. I don't care what his record is. The fact. The fact remains. This is their ninth season. They only have one playoff appearance with nothing to show for it. And fouled away by Ty France. He is fighting the count. So 13 pitches for the pitcher right now. Hmm. And Sarah, you're looking at other streams right now, huh? You're looking at everyone. I'm glad that I'm one of them. Highest strikeout rate this season is owned by the Seattle Mariners. Not yep. good. Here's the pitch. And that is low for a ball. Good eye by Ty France. And now we're looking at a two and two count. You know, Wicks, uh, you know, it looks like Wicks is uh, doing what I thought he was going to do. You know, not be not be in the central part of the plate. And now here's the 2-2 two -two pitch and a swing and a miss, strike three, and that's going to retire the side. We go to the top of the second, no runs, no hits, no man left on. It will be still nothing, nothing. And also, this is now my 12th game. I am now 12 of 14 in Mariners game attendance. That is, I'm already on pace to beat my 43 in like less than two months. Wow. Consistency. Very much. You gotta love it. Yeah, you gotta I love really it. do love it. Actually relieved, no offense to Trident. I'm relieved that he wasn't going to be able to do the game because I was, because as soon as I saw the Apple advertisement, I was like, wait, now I'm kind of tempted at best. But then when he said, oh no, the game's all yours. I was like, yep, that's an easy decision right there. Yeah, I don't know, man. I was I was somewhat looking forward to the Oakland A's Washington Nationals broadcast, but you know what though, you can't go wrong with uh, you know, you know, the Mariners offense being stalled for seven and a half innings before they finally, you know, decide to decide to wake up. Decide to wake up. You can't you know, you like it's that's the thing. It's like, you know, why do we do this? Why do we do this to ourselves? Why do we victimize ourselves with this baseball team? Because we've been doing it for years, you know. We have, that, we, we, we're that's used why. to it. We're used to it. I mean, 2004 <laughs> was a, was a huge lesson of like learning how to watch a losing team, considering that 2000 was the first time I watched, like actually followed the stats and everything, watch sure. the games. And yeah. yes, I came into so, a winning situation and then 2004 yeah. happens. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm not used to this. Yeah. Well, yeah. Unfortunately I was around for, I was around for the eighties and 
the, the early nineties and yeah. So you remember, you know what? It must really be frustrating to watch 91 with that kind of after winning like 83 games and there's so much hope. And then next season, they just completely lay an egg. And the only positive thing out of it was it got a rod. Well, you know, the, you know, the, the crazy thing about the 92 season was it was the one and only uh, one and only year for Bill Plummer. Uh, the players really didn't respond to Bill Plummer. And, uh, you know, the thing about it is mostly the same staff that Jim Lee, Jim Lefevre had the year before Edgar wins the batting title, you know, juniors, junior. Uh, and of course that was still in the maturation process of Randy Johnson. Um, yeah, it, it, it was a little, was a little frustrating. And now here is Bryce Miller and he's going to pitch. And now here is the pitch. And I looked up that Kevin Mitchell trade. It came at the cost of trading away Mike Jackson. So that's why I think it does. Oh, Christian, you're a Cubs fan. That's right. You're from Chicago. Well, go Mariners, but your presence is welcome. Yep. And bring your Chicago friends here, too. Now, here's the one. And, uh, and of course, miss, strike one. we ended up getting Mike Jackson back later on down the road. And then Lee, and Lee Pelicudis goes, he doesn't fit our financial future for 97. So we'll let him go. Yeah, he goes to Cleveland, uh, but uh, you know he came back uh, in the in the uh, early two thousands. So here's the pitch, and swinging a miss. Wait, Mike Jackson came back to the Mariners in two thousand. I don't recall. Yeah, he was a, he was a part of the uh, the two thousand one bullpen. No, that was Charlton. Charlton no, came Charlton. back in 01. Yeah, he did too. He did. Wait, too. Mike Jackson? No, I, we got you. Got to look that up. <laughs> yeah, because I remember. 2001 with photographic memory and now here's the one two pitch and that is just inside for a ball and hannah thank you for being on this show as well oh you know what oh you know what i'm i'm thinking about arthur Rhodes. my bad arthur Rhodes. yeah yeah my bad a train bad. all good now here's the two two pitch and now here's a fly ball to is that gonna be mitch or julio and that's going to be Mitch, and that will make the catch. Bryce Miller, yeah. yeah, he really has improved his stuff compared to last year because last year was a very predictable one-dimensional fastball pitcher. Yep, yep, and he got hammered quite a bit. Especially going into September, but now that he's mixing it up, like yep. now yep. it makes you feel good that he is their, our fourth option, and our fourth option is one of our two best pitchers in the team. And now let's see who Whoa. is up to bat. It is going to be Bush. Michael Bush is up to the plate. Yeah. So so let me ask you, are you are you a fan of Bush or are you a fan of Bush Light? None. <laughs> now here's the pitch. <laughs> Takes a lot to convince me to actually drink if you're talking about that. <laughs> Michael Bush is batting 270 with two home runs and seven RBIs. So still a very stacked Chicago offense. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Now here is the pitch. Now here's a line drive. Oh, <laughs> caught by Ty France. Nice catch by Ty France. Good reflexes. And now we've got two down. I thought that was going to get through for a base hit and at least a double. But that's what Ty France prevented is a double yeah. or extra bases. Yeah, you know, and, and Ty is – a phenomenal defender. And, and I think that's, you know, that's been the greatest part about his maturation, not just at the plate. But and also, he did it with his bubble gum, not mm -hmm. even popped. That's even yeah. more impressive because yeah. chewing gum and physical activity ain't easy at all. And now here's the pitch <laughs> and swing and a miss strike one. Yeah, that was a great, that was a great play that, you know, it, you, you know when you when you think about that play by Ty France, and it 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 probably did save a double, but the way that uh, the way that the momentum was carrying Hanniger over, uh, you wonder if whether or not that was going to be a single. And now we yeah, got O2 probably... count already. Bryce Miller pitching very well so far, at least for now. Jackie Robinson Day coming up on April the fifteenth, so I assume everyone's going to dress in forty twos. And now here's the O2. And here's a line drive, and that just gets right over. That was a Texas leaguer. Those are the biggest killers. Those are the most deadly hits, I think, in the game is those little bloopers where it's like you can't really yeah. do much about it. J.P. Crawford yeah. tried. I commended the effort, but it's just a tough one to get. You know, and, it, and, and, and the crazy thing, it's like 
you know, it, it was, you know, I, I would probably assume that was in on his hands and he just kind of fisted it over the head, you know, fisted it over the head of uh, JP. Oh man, Flick, you're so savage. Yeah. And now here's Talkman, and that is low for a ball. And then, by the way, that is the first hit given up by Bryce Miller. Yeah. It's so a if you were thinking over. of a no hitter, it's over. <laughs> Already over in the wow. second inning. Wow. Flick of the switch is going off. He really is going off. Uh huh. You know, oh man, I really wish you saw speed because you would, because I could have said more things about the Ford Bronco. You know, I know who is in speed. I have just never seen speed. You should see it. It's a great movie. I, you know, I'm not a Keanu guy. I'm just not by nature a Keanu Reeves guy. And now here is a fly ball to left field. And he makes the catch and that will retire the side. I believe that is, that should be Dylan Moore. Uh, that was a yes. nice catch by Ty France. Okay, how about this? Is it, do these following actors make it more intriguing? I We've got Keanu Reeves, Jeff Daniels, Sandra Bullock. I like Jeff Daniels. Yeah, Jeff yeah. Daniels. He's cool. I like him. But yes, flick of the switch. The other interesting fact about that whole chasing thing was it happened on the first day of the 94 USA World Cup, a key NBA Finals game, yeah, a Stanley yeah. Cup game, probably some really cool yeah. baseball game, and it was well, all overshadowed because of OJ Simpson. So I was actually watching the uh, the NBA Finals when it when it broke in to you know the national the national broadcast. So uh, the screen went to a double screen, and of course the four you know the the four Bronco took the big portion of the screen. And uh, I remember looking at my dad, and I'm like, OJ Simpson? You mean Nordberg Nordberg from the Naked Gun is being chased chased down chased down the freeway by the pol by the police? And that's when you know, that's when, you know, uh, when Al Michaels cut in and, you know, he was, he was talking a little bit about it. And then of course the entire country became encapsulated, uh, with the trial of the century. Some... I remember, I re I remember exactly where I, where I was when the verdict came in. I knew I was, I knew exactly where I was at. I was in school. Uh, and, uh, to this day it was, uh, it's still a little shocking, not, not all that shocking, but some would believe that, the Buffalo Bills and the Philadelphia Eagles are to blame for the whole situation because the Eagles, they stopped their tank in that season, which got the Bills OJ Simpson and all that crap I think happened. Did that crap happen in Buffalo or that she met the girl in Buffalo? No, no. So so are you talking about when when OJ met Nicole Brown? That's what I'm that thinking. Happened. That happened, you know, that, so OJ was, uh, had originally married, he married young, uh, and he was in college at USC and then he met Nicole Brown towards the end of his career when he was playing for the 49ers. Oh, so it doesn't really matter. And now we've got Mitch Hanniger up to the plate yes. and he has been okay for the team so far, at least not terrible. He's batting 262. And now here's a line drive and that's going to drop for a base hit. And we've got a man on board. That is Mitch Hanniger. That's going to raise his batting average to maybe 270, yeah. maybe. 279. He That just blew up a po three points. Good piece of hitting for Mitchell. That's exactly what you want to see. Wow. I remember the when 9-11 happened. I, I was still. watching the best. I was watching the best damn sports show, period. Then I go to the bathroom. I come out. And next thing I know, I see a plane crashing into a building. I was like, what, yeah. what the f did I just see? Now, here's Polanco. And that is outside I, for a yeah. ball. I was watching, uh, I was watching the news in the morning. I was drinking coffee, and uh, all of a sudden, the special bulletin came in, and they cut to New York City, and there was smoke coming out of the first tower. And I, as I'm like, oh, we're we're being attacked, like the realization of what happened, and then the second plane hit the second tower, and I'm like, oh, uh, like I like I it, still it I still like real. I, it, it, it didn't really like at first it wasn't registering like who, like what is happening? Like, what am I watching? Yeah. And that's a pie for a ball for Polanco. He seems to be a little bit more patient on this at bat than what we're used to. 
Well, you know, the, you know, the, the first pitch was, you know, the change outside trying to expand the zone on him a little bit, trying to maybe see if he can, you know, get a swing on him, but, uh, you know, pitch. Two. now here's a line pitch. drive and that's going to drop in for a base hit. And now you got runners on first and second and Polanco. That's probably the more solid hit I've ever seen out of him this entire season, other than that home run. So good at bat by Polanco. And now it's, now it's about, it's about cashing in with runners in scoring position. The you Mariners gotta make have it ca- happen. Yep. You get the first two, you get the first two on and now you get, uh, what, uh, you get Garver. Uh, hey. And uh, this is, yeah, this is uh, a big moment for Garver here. Uh, this is why I think I wish uh, Cal Raleigh was up there and how here's the pitch and that is going to be low for a ball. Mitch Garver has not really done much this season, batting 167 with yep. two RBIs. I mean, it's better than Tommy LaStella at least, but it ain't saying much or Cooper Hummel. Yeah, and oh, yeah. Here that, you know, is the one oh pitch outside for a ball. Isn't that the always isn't that always the go-to, the Tommy LaStella and Cooper Hummel, you know? What a way That's to start not, the 2023 uh, season. Uh, if they started with Mike Ford, maybe it would have been a little bit different. And like five years from pitch. now. And that's a strike. You know, like five years from now, we're still going to be talking about Tommy LaStella and Cooper Hummel. Hey. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> as long as they don't win a World Series or make the playoffs. And now we're looking at a 2-1 pitch Strong to Garber. And check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. And I was like, man, what a... Not a good swing attempt right there by Mitch Garver. Mitch yeah. Hanniger is just like, come on, Mitch, get me home, dang it. You're yeah, you're you're uh you're giving a bad name to the Mitch, you know, to the Mitchell you really deal. are. And now we're looking at the two two pitch on the way. And that is a pie for a ball. And if he takes a walk, I will actually have a I have a reaction video for you, Mitch Garver, if you do make it on base. And it's gonna be a lot better than he gets on base. So please walk, because I have something for you. <laughs> Garver's working at a full count. 25 pitches in for this pitcher, for Hicks. Now here's the pitch. And that is ball four. Take your base. Now we have the bases Boom. loaded. And Mitch, this is for you. Congratulations, yeah. Mitch Garver, on a nice walk. And now bases are loaded for Cal Raleigh, the big dumper. Unfortunately, he's on his right side. But, hey, he hit a home run on his right side, so you just never know. And now here's the yeah, pitch. But... And his home run probability is 3%, and I think it has something to do with the fact that he's batting righty. Well, you know, the crazy thing is he's a natural righty. But uh, what I will say is that uh, um, this is an opportunity where sacrifice flies – you know, you just solid base hits are going to score two. Um, just you know, God, you know, God forbid a double play ball still going to score yeah. one, but uh, you know, you the, right but now, Cal, feet maybe. Yeah. Well, right now it's, uh, well, you it's have to run either cashing. way. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you, what, what you want is a nice, easy swing, dump one into the gap. Just anything. And now here's the one, one swing and a miss strike two. And you could, see that he was really trying to yeah to be the yeah. hero on that and and that's you know and and that gets back to the biggest problem it, it's you know setting out to you know, setting out to hit home runs when really all you all you need is a base hit it's really just base hit of needs and now here's the yeah. pitch and swing and a miss strike three and now this inning is in danger of ending yeah. with a double play which you do not want Absolutely. That was, uh, you know, that was uh, a bad at bat by Cal and he's, you know, the, the two, very disappointing. The, the two change ups in the, uh, the two change ups, uh, to start the, uh, to start the at bat went off. And then when he was at, uh, when he was at one and one, that change up and that, yeah, he expands the strike zone and it's just like, dude. And now here is Dylan Moore up to the plate. He is now one Oh, count on him right now. It's like, Bottom how are you going to let second. a dude, with, how are you going to let a dude with goofy glasses get the better of you? And Dylan Moore takes that first strike and that's going to be a one and one. <laughs> yep. Three balls away from the Mariners lead. That's going to be the ticket. Or if they could just 
hit anything in the gap or just anything in play. That's not well, a double you know, play. Here's the pitch. And yeah. now here's a fly ball to that. I don't know if that's going to be enough room for Mitch Hanner to run. And is that tacky? No, Mitch Hanner's not going to go. And he would have been nailed if he did. Yep. Not deep enough. And that was the, you know, the, and that that's what I was trying to explain. Even a, even a, a fly ball gets a run in depending on the depth. And now, you know, now we're saddled. Yeah. Now we're saddled with two outs and the base is loaded. And this is like worst case scenario. And now it's Luis Urias up to bat and fewest runs per game. Mariners are certainly in the bottom yeah. five, just ahead of Minnesota, Oakland and Chicago and Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the other Chicago. <laughs> yeah, here's the pitch. And that is up high for a ball. Luis Urias with a 33% RBI probability. So you're telling so, me there's a chance. There's a chance. 158 and, you know, batting average. This is actually a, a pretty good matchup uh, for the Mariners. Uh, Urias uh, actually hits the, uh, hits the changeup pretty well. So um, if there's anything... If there's anything near the uh, anything near the strike zone, it might be a it might be a you know a benefit for the Mariners. All right, let's get this going. We got one and one, and now here is going to be the pitch. Now here is a ground ball foul and strike two already. Urias is down to that final strike, and if the Mariners can't score, I think it should warrant some boos. And I'm going to raise the volume just to see if there's any boos. And if there's boos. I'd actually encourage it because you yeah, gotta. I mean, it's it's uh, it's it's an inexpe- uh, it's uh, it's inexcusable. Yeah, inexcusable. Bases loaded, no outs, and you can't even bring uh, bring in one. Can't even bring in one GD run. And now we're talking about the one two, and that is fouled back, and he's still trying to fight it off. At least he's fighting it off, but you still want to get those runs in. 37 pitches for Wicks. And imagine if he gets away with it, but with all those, with all that taxing against him. Yeah. And that's the thing. And, and, you know, Wicks isn't throwing the ball well. And that's, you know, that's the, that's the problem. It's like you, when you, when Uh, you one, two pitch and popped up and fouled. When a pitcher is giving you, you know, three bases and he's telling you that he's having trouble locating, uh, it's a pretty good, you know, it's a pretty good indicator that you might be able to, might want to take advantage of it. And uh, right now the Mariners are just not right now. And now here is the one, two pitch and that hits him. He will take it for the team and the Mariners will score and they will lead one, nothing. We'll take it. I'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take it. He took one for the team. He did it like a brave man. He took it like a man. Things men do. They take yeah, the like, team. Looks like my broadcast. But the way he got better. hit isn't great. Hey, that hurts. But he's like, whatever. I get a free run. We got a gun. Someone's sorry to feel bad for her. <laughs> Flick, I love I love Flick. No matter how much he criticizes me with all the commercials that I play or whatever I say or do, he will always be funny. Oh, Christian, buck up, man. You have all you have a good Cubs offense. Come on. Wicks is a goofy looking bastard. Yeah, he's all a nerd. You know, when I was in high school, I was even rejected by nerds to be in their group. I, I didn't okay. even have a group I was in high say, school. I was like, oh, okay, so you were you were dating members of the chess club? I, I the chess club wouldn't have accepted me. Damn. I was like just my individual self. Now here's JP Crawford. You were just living your best life. Yeah, and, I, and looking back on it, I think it was awesome. Like, you know, sure, I had like one or two friends, but it's not like I was like sure, sure. specific in a group. Now here's we, uh, JP Crawford with a 1-0. We had the same group of friends all the way since like the fourth grade and through junior high and high school. It was like me and three dudes that were just absolute baseball geeks. It was <laughs> That's excellent. The best. It was it was excellent. And now we're looking at the one one. And now here's the pitch, and that is low. And J.P. Crawford is, as of now, working on a really good count. He's on a two-and-one count. Hopefully he can still work it. And that's 42 pitches already Ooh. for this guy. Yeah, now, they're, they're just, they were just showing the uh, the hit-by-pitch to uh, Urias. Here's the pitch. He, 
And check swing. Oh, he fouled it. Fouled it into the glove. JP and, uh, shouldn't have. It wasn't even a good pitch to swing either. Maybe he thought it was going to come down or something. No, I, I think he shouldn't have swung at it in, anyway. JP Crawford kind of regrets that. Now we're looking at the 2-2 pitch. And now here's a ground ball and right to the third baseman, the throw to first. And it's in time. And we go to the in top time. of the third. Although Mariners kind of squandered the bases loaded, but they still got an RBI out of it. one nothing Mariners. Shazam. Shazam. And let's play my other advertisement because a minute breather is needed. Modern Exterior Solutions is a fully licensed and insured full-service exterior renovations company serving Seattle and Eastside communities. We know that a home is one of your most important possessions. That's why we're committed to providing high-quality, affordable home renovations for each customer's individual budget. We're diverse enough to meet the challenges of any project you put in front of us. Our workmanship minimizes the use of third-party services, and our team works together to meet all your deadlines. Anytime there's a challenge, we work with you to find a solution. We're proud to work with distributors of quality brand products with durable, ample protection from the elements for a variety of applications, including James Hardy siding and trim. Talk with us today about your project's needs, and we can help you solve all the challenges along the way. If you would like your home to be improved, use the promo code Modern Rooftop to get 20% off. And if you're in Snohomish County and someone calls, if they and if you, you try to call him because I will convince him to go to Snohomish. I will I'll get him to do it. We're good friends. <laughs> do it. Do it. Call uh, him. Do it. Yep. Call. Use the promo code. Get your 20% off. Get your roof fixed. Let's not uh, let's not mess around, especially if your roof is you know over a decade old. Take care of it. Don't be yeah, a hero. that gross mossy roof, totally non presidential roof. Yeek. What is up with Safari in the chat room? This is uh, oh, she's just promoting wow. my donation oh, thing, okay. membership, got and it. got it. She does a lot of like helping out thing, which is nice. At one point last year, she was giving like all the random box scores in Major League Baseball throughout these games and oh and we are back from the break and it's a one nothing lead so far should have been a lot more but hey we'll take a one nothing lead but man that base is loaded not take the so lead where you can get it you can yeah gonna have to yeah and christian you're right Machado just hit a home run for me yeah christian you're absolutely right you can't hit the number nine batter with the bases loaded but he did so he there you go did, yeah yep and now we are looking at Bryce Miller. He's pitching pretty well right now. And now here yeah, is good. the pitch. And that is in there for a strike. It was a 94 mile an hour fastball. Oh, and the, hitter, <laughs> the hitter is going to be Jan Gomes or Gomez. Probably Gomes. Uh, look, it's, look go, it's, it, it's Gomes. Jan Gomes. Jan Gomes. And and by the way, Jan Gomes was a killer back in his Indians day. He was, was he? And that's a know, swing that and a is. miss. Strike mm -hmm. two. Very good fastball hitter. I miss the good old days of names. I miss the good old days where, where the, the Cleveland baseball team was called the Indians, not the Guardians. I know. And here's I the 0-2. And a swing and a miss, strike three. I heard that there was actually a copyright infringement when they were attempting to get the Guardians name, so I, I think Cleveland had to overpay to get that name. Could be. Could be. Oh, what, was what was ridiculous is there was no pub there was there was no grand squall, uh, grand squall or public outcry to change the name. They just got out in front of it just in case somebody got offended. Yay. So they just like prematured. Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> they jumped ahead, and now here is the pitch. That's a very Cleveland thing to do. They choked on the they they choked on their own name change. Yeah, I uh, you know and uh, you know and they're the the guardians. So on their main bridge, they have these little guardian statues, and so it was a, it paid homage to you know the the guardians of the city, and it's like it's kind of a dumb name. Hey. Also, the Commanders, like that, that name's so bad that I'd rather just have Washington football team. Yeah, you, you and me both. 
You I actually I actually liked it because it was so Washington of them. Like it fit their identity of like, oh yeah, we're just Washington, whatever. Our football team sucks. Yeah. Uh I don't know. I, I thought it was uh I thought it was kind of ridiculous that you know, like a small group of people were did. forced. And now here's a ground ball right to your rice. Nearly bobbles at the throat of first, and that's in time. That could have been easily an error, but Urias, he yeah. figured it out. Good play. That yeah, was a good play. I would have bobbled that for sure. Hmm. But yeah, third base, surprisingly, at least since the Boston series, actually hasn't been one of the concerns of the team. After, at least after Boston, it, it has improved, in my opinion, from what I'm seeing. And well, now here's you know, the pitch. That is a ball. I will say yes and no. Uh, you know, a, a couple days ago, we were on the call when uh, when um, uh, Polanco had himself a game at second base with a couple errors. Oh, yeah. Well, that's sec that's second base. We're talking about third base. But yeah, second Polanco, at least he made it up for it. Here's the pitch. And that is a ball. And he did make up for it in that Blue Jays game very impressively. A little bit, yeah. A little bit. And this is Suzuki. Two home runs and 12 RBIs. With all these Asians coming in, they seem to be trying to take over the world of baseball. They're all following Ichiro and Otani. Now here's the pitch. Now here's a ground ball, and that gets right through for a base hit. On two outs, Suzuki gets on base with a single. Mm, yeah, and... Uh... He's a he's a he's a dangerous hitter, man. Uh, you you know you think you're lucky stars that it was only a single. It is, yeah, very lucky to be single. And while they're showing the replay, I have already outdid my minor league baseball in views within just two innings because I got championship. I got at most fifty on that on that game. And now here's Cody Bellinger, another dangerous hitter, obviously. And now here's the pitch. Now, here is a fly ball to center field, but Julio is there. He makes the catch, yeah. and that will retire the side. Uh, we got go. no runs, one hit, one man left. We will go to the bottom of the third. It is one nothing Mariner still. And they're showing the commercial of MLB The Show. They're showing Verlander when he was younger. There's Judge, Harper. Um, they're showing Jeter for a moment. I can't play these games anymore. It's uh, it's kind of interesting that uh, uh, that Verlander's still kicking around at 40, 41 years old. But you know that oh, being he said, he's, he still has he still has the stuff to be effective. So why not? It's crazy that he, they he left Houston for that contract in New York, and New York was like, "No, nope, never mind. We'll trade it. Here you go, Houston." And I was like, "Well, oh, no." <laughs> well, I mean, you can't you can't really blame him considering that the Mets absolutely collapsed last year and. You know what good is what good is holding on to you know Justin Verlander in that contract when you just when you know you have no you have no reason to so I wasn't surprised. And then the Houston got had Kendall Graveman back, so that team was pretty much back together yeah. at least at least to be in time for that playoff run. Too bad it just it yeah. ended up Texas being the better of them, and Texas and I, is still doing well. And I think Graveman had the uh, had the arm injury, and uh, he's out this year. Oh, man. Yeah, he's got the arm injury, a lot of arm injuries. And this is actually, and looking at the standings, it's actually very competitive. We got Oakland still in the mix. Houston is just pretty much laid an egg because they don't have a bullpen. Angels are after that start, but we know what happens. Usually, knock yeah. on wood, they have that little nice start, and then they just they expire. They're and then the you Angels. got the Texas Rangers in the lead, but only seven and six. Yeah, you know what? What's uh, what's interesting about it is, you know, Texas is going to rebound because Texas just has too much talent for them not to. And right now, the you know the one thing about the Houston Astros that is, you know, that's right now their bugaboo is their starting pitchers. But that being said, they're going to get Verlander back. They're going to get McCullers back. Uh, they're going to get Fromber. Uh, and you know, once uh, once that rotation is intact with that bullpen, you would probably assume that Houston's going to get right back into this thing as well too. They're they're also too good. Uh, they're yeah. like big banks. They're like they're you know they're big banks, man. They're too good to fail. I'm I keep telling Houston <laughs> fans to relax, and they're like all uptight. And, and I make the joke saying, "Could be worse. You could be the Mariners." <laughs> well, you know what's what's funny is I I, I just it, it's funny. 
you know, to watch, you know, baseball fan, fans go through the Whopper freakout stage 13 games into the season, not realizing that, you know, there's 162 games for a reason. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And, uh, you know, that's the thing. It's like, it, it takes a long time to gel. It takes a long time to get momentum. Here's the old one. And that is a ball. And uh, get some continuity. So Astros fans, calm, calm down. Just chill out, man. Just chill out. And now we're looking at a 1-1. And now here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Only Mariner fans can freak out after 10 games and act like the sky is falling and blame That management. is well warranted. Yeah, that's well warranted. You you guys haven't had 50 years of just shitty baseball. <laughs> yeah, with the exception of like a few like, yeah, well, here you go exception. kind of thing. Here's the pitch. <laughs> and what was that? Julio swinging like a... <laughs> that was more funny than frustrating. It's like the way he struck out, He's he's like... Uh ah. And this is like, uh and the you know this is why you know I always in, in the back of my head I always question if whether or not the pressure of you know that he puts too much pressure on himself to you know to uh to come through, whether it's the contract in, or you, he you know. came I mean he came in like super confident and now oh he bobbles it and Ty France gets to first base, he gets a free base on that. Whether they'll call that an error, I mean, moral, he should have just blew it out, just like Lenny did. You know who? You know it. it it's that entire at bat was one of the worst at bats I think I've ever seen. I think it was too. You know, and wow, just and the fact that Moral had all that time, he still had time to throw Ty France out, but Willie will more than take it. And now we got a man on base, and now here is Mitch Haniger. Can he extend the lead for the Mariners? Here's the pitch. Let's go, and Mitchell. That is inside for the ball. Mitchell. That's 50 pitches and three innings for Hicks. Yeah, it looks like the Mariners may may get into the bullpen early against Wicks, 1 0. Depending on and that is a strike. 1 1. Mitch Hanniger is batting 279. He is off to a pretty decent start for the Mariners. I keep saying he's okay, but the batting average just fluctuates a lot. Here's the pitch, and that is up high for a ball two and one count. It would be nice to see Mitchell start, you know, stepping into a few and and, and driving him out. He hasn't had the uh, home run since opening day. It would be nice to see. Since the Toronto game, actually. Oh, yeah, you're right. Here's you're a 2-1. Right. Now here's a ground ball. Could be double play ball. The throw to second. The throw to first. And he is safe. But Ty Ooh. France gets forced out, so that's going to be a fielder's choice for Mitch Hanniger. Yep. And we've got two outs. Yeah. Showing the that's grounder. Good. It was an easy one to second base because Ty France doesn't really run too well. And that's Mitch a, Hanniger barely made it. That's an understatement. He doesn't run. He doesn't run. He doesn't run at all. He really doesn't. I guess driveline doesn't teach people how to run effectively. Yeah, he runs Jorge, like <laughs> Jorge Polanco, and that is foul ball. Yeah, he runs like a middle aged guy. He really does. <laughs> Batting 184 <laughs> with one home run and three RBIs. He is one for one with a single. See, he was partially part of getting that bases loaded, but too bad it only turned into just one run. Should have been more, but maybe Polanco can step up. Here's the pitch. And now here's a fly ball popped up. And that's going to be caught. It always it yep. looks nice from the angle. And now that's going to retire the side. We go to the top of the fourth inning. Game is breezing by. one nothing Mariners. Bad at-bats. Just bad Terrible at-bats. At Julio's yeah. was really bad. Yeah. Polanco's wasn't really all that great either. No, just a really bad pop-up effort. You know, the, you know, the interesting thing is, you know, they, you know, the Mariners like to, you know, like to preach, you know, control the zone, control the zone. And yet they step up to the plate actively looking to swing as hard as they can to try to, you know, try to hit it out of the park. And it's, you know, very counter, uh, very counterproductive. Yeah. They're showing the Marines commercial and Corona. Semper Fi. Shout out to the Marines. 
Yep. Thank you for your service, Marines. Keep us safe. Now they're showing Home Depot commercial. Uh, they're showing something. Uh, Climate Pledge? Climate Pledge Arena? Yeah, Climate Pledge Arena. Home of yeah. the Kraken. That's where the old key arena is. Yeah. Future home to the Supersonics. Hopefully so, because, man, are we due for a team. It's been long overdue. And they've been saying it for years and years. They're showing five ener ener energy. And now they're okay, showing the iPhone the, uh, commercial. Yeah, there's the uh, there's the Corona and the Marines commercial commercials. I'm just a little bit behind you on the stream. It looks like it is, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, so interesting game so far tonight. Uh the one big opportunity against the uh, against Wix, they just couldn't cash in. And now you're, you know, and and now you're in a situation where now they're trying to uh, be a little too aggressive. Um, and uh, this is this is the frustrating part about you know the Mariner offense, where you know you have guys that have been around for quite a while that understand how to uh, you know how to put together a professional at bat, and yet they're you know yeah you saw Julio's at bat, it was like. Yeah. That that was it was awful. It was cringe. And now we're looking at the top of the fourth. Bryce Miller still pitching well. As of now, here's the pitch. And a swing and a miss. It's a 94 mile an hour fastball. Wonder if he's I wouldn't missed. think he's list I wouldn't think he's losing zip on it, but we're like used to a 95 on Bryce Miller. Well, that's fine. Taking a, a little bit off. He's a 95 top off guy. And now here is another pitch. And now here's a fly ball fouled back. And is that playable for Cal Raleigh? And he slips and no, doesn't it would have it man that that almost hit the dude in the the gentleman in the wheelchair. He didn't even know what to do. I don't think they'll I don't yeah, know if there'll be much a win. Now they're showing the replay. Yeah, I'm. I'm. You know, I'm wondering what's gonna what's gonna transpire for Luis Urias because uh, you know that ball was when it the ball that hit him literally went right off the top of the knee. Yeah, it hurts. Now here's the O2, and that is low for a ball, 96 mile an hour. And Bryce Miller tried to, I think, fool him on that pitch, try to get him to swing. Yep. Got to use a splitter to make that work. Well, against yeah. the right user, you're you're gonna see you're gonna see the slider or the sweeper. And now we're looking at the one-two pitch. And now here's another pop-up and fouled once again. And now we're looking at one and two. 44 pitches for Miller. Pretty efficient. Yep. Yep. 42 pitches through the, uh, through the fourth. 10 pitches per inning. Uh, man, these, uh, these City Connect uniforms are distracting. They really are. Uh, now here's the one-two. And that is fouled again. The City Connect uniform I wanted was just get the 2000 Mariners uniform back, the black Seattle ones. I still want them to wear those. You know, I like the jersey and I like the yellow numbers, right? I, I like the hat and I like the jersey. It's just the, the black pants with the yellow belt and the stripe is... is uh, I actually didn't have a problem with like Here's it. the one, too. And now here's a ground ball foul. And we'll try this again. And Moral is actually... Is really putting work on Bryce Miller. That's okay. You're gonna you're gonna get a couple of these at bats where uh you know where uh you know you're gonna foul off five or six pitches, run it up to seven, eight, nine pitch at bat. Uh, Chris Morrill was kind of upset that it wasn't fair for whatever reason, or maybe is he in pain? I wonder if he is in pain. Either he was in pain or he was just really frustrated. <laughs> Who was the 2017 RBI leader, American League? I was going to guess Nelson Cruz. And 119 for the Mariners. And that was unfortunately a lost season for them because their entire starting pitching was pretty much injured. And Felix was like pretty much gone. Yeah, by that point, yeah. 
It was 2016 when he was pretty much gone. Here's the one, two. And now that's popped up, and that is foul. Way f oh, no, it's actually going to go to Mitch Hanniger. The camera angle was just off, and now we got one down. Oh, do you know we what uh, the, the uh, where uh, the play where you thought Moral uh, Moral hurt himself? It looked like he got a uh, it looked like the ball clipped the top of the bat, and he had a nice little case of bat buzz. Oh, where you know where you those. where your hand yeah where your hands yeah, ring a little bit yeah because he was messing yeah. with this he was messing with the hands on his way back to the uh so I got to grab a new. I've had so. those <laughs> it ain't fun. Here's the pitch, no. and that is a strike. And that is Dansby Swanson, one of the one of the good, solid Cubs players. Mm -hmm. The guy that I was He's hoping the Mariners stop. would sign to I was hoping the Mariners would sign him to play second base. Would have been nice. Here's the pitch. And now here's a fly ball, and that's gonna be caught by Dylan Moore. And now we got two down. There you go. Bing bang boom. We got Nelson Cruz on opening day. He was up there. Felix Hernandez yep. was the catcher for that ceremonial yep. first pitch. And Nelson Cruz threw the ball backwards. That really <laughs> did set the tone for opening day. And Felix doesn't even catch it. Yeah, that uh, that, that was team a moment really that... should have made the playoffs at least once. Realistically, it should have made the playoffs a few that times. That was a moment. But... Yeah. In 2016, I think they should have made it. And I think maybe they could have made some kind of a decent run. 2014, I think they could have made a decent run as well with Cano's first season. And now here is the 1-0 pitch. And swing and a miss. That was a half-ass swing, and that's going to be a strike one. You know who? Uh, you know who uh, somebody was telling me that if, uh, that if Ty France didn't have the year that he had last year or he had something that was on par from 2021-2022. Now here's a fly ball to right field, and that's going to be a fair ball. And looks like we got a double happening for the Cubs, and now we got a runner in scoring position. Oh, hmm. uh, uh, yeah, Ty France was yeah, it, like 2022 France. Uh, yeah, 21, 21 or 22 France. The, the, you know, the Mariners not only make the playoffs, but make a deep run, potentially a World Series run. And I'm like... Obviously, you didn't see September. <laughs> it's not a crazy thought. Uh, it's not a crazy thought, but a lot of things had to uh, had to conspire in the right way for something like that to happen. And it was unfortunate to see Ty France regress that way. Yeah. But now we got a runner on second base, and they got to get out of it quick. Here's the pitch, and that is a strike. We're looking at a 95-mile-an-hour fastball, and this is Nico... Can't even say his name. Don't want to say it. He's batting Nico 189. Horner. Nico Horner. And now we're looking at the pitch. Now here's a fly ball to deep right field. And Mitch Hanniger is there and he makes the catch. And that's going to retire the side. No runs. One hit. One man left on. It is still one nothing. But let's keep getting some offense going. And now I have a question. Now that we're on commercial break, what is the best Mariners team to miss the playoffs? The best Mariners team not to make the playoffs. Uh, let's see. A team that was good but didn't make the playoffs, I would probably have to say, well, let's see, because in 96, the following the 95 year, they weren't even close. 98, 99, they weren't close. 2003, 2002, 2003, could be up there. Twenty, uh, you know, twenty twenty one could easily be up there as well too. Uh, I'm going to say, say, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to, I'm going to say two thousand three, uh, because I actually thought that the the two thousand three team was a little bit better than 02. Uh, Offense and was that, slightly better, and I thought Boone that had the power year, and I thought that they were at one point the best team in the division. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to say, Randy Wynn, yeah. I'm going to say 2003, 2003. I will actually say 96 and they actually missed the playoffs by just three games because at least going into that run that the starting pitching actually was somewhat fixed with Jamie Moyer coming in by trade. Terry Mulholland, ugh, Terry Mulholland, Terry Mulholland, Sterling Hitchcock was at least okay. 
and but they had that offense that really could have at least made some kind of a deep run. Sure. And sure. the bullpen yeah. wasn't exactly like the biggest disaster. Yeah, they finished 85 and 76. Uh and uh you know, but that's you know, when you look at when you look at the the pitching. Now you have to remember 96 Randy Johnson was dealing with uh he was a dealing with issue. Yeah, the uh the herniated disc issue in his back and he was gone pretty much the majority of the year. Uh Jamie Moyer uh he was still he was still in his Mar uh, Mariner infancy. He only pitched 70 innings that year, 72 thirds. Uh, but when you looked at that rotation, uh, and then you looked at the bullpen, you can understand why that team failed to make the playoffs. I, I don't know. Like when you stack it, when you stack it, I thought I thought the 2003 pitching staff was better, and I actually even think that the 2021 team pitching staff was a lot better than '96. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, yeah, pitching. Well, any pitching staff's gonna be better than any of the '90s yeah. pitching staff. Yeah, you know, and and don't get me wrong. The, the 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 best thing that the '96 team had going on was the fact that they played 81 games in the Kingdom, and they had you know they had Junior, A Rod, and Edgar in their lineup. So. All in ones, yeah, yeah, and all yeah. in their absolute like best too. Like they yeah. were putting yeah, up right huge in their prime. numbers. Yeah, right in their prime. Dan Wilson even almost hit almost 20. And now here's the pitch, and that is outside for ball three. Garber's actually working the count very well in this game so far. Yeah, and I think uh, I think Buner also hit Buner 40 hit 44, yeah. and he actually yeah. batted above 270. Yeah. Now here's Buner, the great one. Swing and a was, miss, and he got fooled. That was the, you know, Buner had a three-year stretch where he hit 40-plus. He hit right in the middle of, Yeah, right in the middle of the 90s. And then is and then injuries just got him. Finally got him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, After by two thousand one. Yeah, yeah, by two thousand one, he was he, he was a shot fighter. Yeah. Now here's a three two pitch, <laughs> and that is ball four. Take your base. That is a second walk for Mitch Garver. And Mitch Garver, I got something for you, and it's gonna be a little bit better this time. Why do you like him? Because he gets on base. He really does it. He finally did it. And RBIs, he was actually the third in RBIs for postseason. Mitch Garver, just behind your Alvarez, and of course, Adolis Garcia. And he was something else. Here's the pitch, and another and a half fast swing by Cal Raleigh, and that's going to be a strike one. Yeah, probably on the change. I would probably assume, considering that's what he struck. Uh, considering that's what he uh, struck out with. Also, Ron, how's it going? Nice to meet you. And now here is the pitch. And another swing and a miss, and Cal Raleigh is just not taking good at bats. He's just oh, I love playing too aggressive. I love the Depoto crowd. Hated Alex Cora, don't you mean Joey Cora? Maybe he actually just hates Alex Cora. I don't know. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, for sure, Mister Stick. Well, here's the O two. And now here's a wild pitch, and that gets away, and Garver will get to second base. I mean, if the Mariners yeah, I mean, made one trade for a bat, then they would have been a shoe in yeah. for the playoffs. If they traded for at least yeah. Aaron Boone, which would have been really cool. Yeah, or... that would have been cool. Yeah, 2003. And a matter of fact, that was the leading into the trading deadline. That was the, the, the rumor. big rumor that the, that the, the Mariners wouldn't end up with Aaron Boone. And, of course, he ends up with the Yankees. And uh, of course, that's what know, triggered Jeff history. Nelson. And now here's the pitch and a swing and a miss. And that was an awful at bat by Cal yeah. Raleigh, just chasing yeah. everything. Strike three. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the Jeff Nelson debacle where uh, he, uh, he, uh, yeah, he pops off at the media and then the next day he's traded to the Yankees. Hey. Yep. And then they just completely just collapsed because they were without that fearless leader. Now here's Dylan Moore up to the plate. And now here is the pitch, and that is fouled back. Let's go. I Dylan. mean, yeah, if they had the playoff format back then, yeah, yeah for sure, sure for but... sure, for sure, yeah. If they had today's playoff format back then, yeah, the Mariners probably would have made the playoffs a few times. Uh, Pringley, my boys, <laughs> you better be the Pringles. <laughs> what? You better be the actual Pringle CEO or something, because uh, I could use some. Um, 
Well, let's work on a deal or something. Yeah, I want some free samples, man. You got the yeah. uh you got the uh the cheddar, the cheddar Pringles, those are pretty good. Pringles are lethal. Once you pop. The fun won't stop. And now here's Dylan Moore looking at O two already. Here's the pitch, and that is low for a ball. Here's the question though, right? Is is our Pringles chips or are they crackers? That's a that's a fine line, isn't it? Yeah, it is, right? No, it's too late. Who is this guy? Whatever. Dude, now, here's the pitch, and Nobody that is asking ball. you. Oh, we got another. If I was a CEO, I wouldn't even look in your direction. You lost me. <laughs> Good lord. Good lord. Now we're getting all actually, the. Actually, you know what? I'll say this. Here's if a pitch. He the... If he was the Pringle CEO. Yeah, like you probably would want to pay attention, you know, to the to your consumers. You know what I mean? You know the 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 uh, the people that actually buy your product. You probably want to you probably want to know how they're doing. Here's the pitch, and that's outside for ball four. And Dylan Moore. There you go. Gets Dylan on Moore base. Like he usually does. Why do you like him? Because he gets on base. How he about the Eagles? No, oh, those Eagles. Remember, the Eagles are so much better than the Eagles. I love that. That was hilarious. The uh, the Eagles. This isn't football season, yo. And now here is Luis Urias. Here's the pitch. And that is popped up and fouled. He went on his knees. I mean, better, he was not wrong. It's like the 2017 Eagles were better than the 2005 Eagles because one of them won a Super Bowl. So so he's not wrong 100%. That was the, uh, that was the Nick Foles Super Bowl, right? Yeah, Nick Foles. Yeah, Nick Foles. And now here's the pitch. And that is a foul ball. Here's a little trivia. Where did where did Nick Foles go to college? Oh, don't even try me. I'm trying you. No, I don't. No I don't even know. Arizona. Hey, pack pack what's with all these pack quarterbacks? And now we're looking at the O2 pitch for Urias, and here it is. And that is low for a ball. Good eye. Urias has been doing okay so far working the count. At least I will say that he's doing better than Colton Wong. I mean, that's a pretty low bar to set, but he is. And now we're looking at the one two pitch. Now, here's a ground ball fouled. You know, Colton Wong was so bad, I literally remember his two home runs. His first home run was against the Yankees, and then the other home run was against the Twins. I remember the one against the Twins. That's when we were like, Colton Wong's back, and the Mariners are going to win. Nope, they lost. No, you know, the thing about Colton Wong was, uh, you know, he was he was here's due for... He, and he here's a line for, drive. Uh, Foul. That would have gotten at least one run. That was really close. I actually was kind of hoping they would bring back Adam Frazier. Uh, he had a nice little end to the 2022 season. For all the ups and downs he has, I think he finished quite strong. What did you think of Toro? Because at least Toro, he was clutch at least once in a while. I like that Toro. I like that Toro played multiple positions. But you know the thing. What you know what's funny though is I don't know if you've been paying attention, but Toro's actually been playing well with Oakland this year. Oakland knows how to do things with young players. Well, I also think there is uh, there Once is something pitch, about swing and a miss, strike three, down goes Urias. There is something about hitting at T-Mobile Park that 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 somewhat ruins hitters that are coming in from other teams. You know, we, that's the thing is we heard it with we heard it with Tay Oscar, we heard it with uh, we heard it a little bit with Suarez that you know the the weird thing for some for whatever reason it's uh, you know T-Mobile messes with certain guys, mostly the righties unless you're Nelson Cruz yeah. and 2000 Edgar Martinez, right. Right, right. There's some guys that are just immune to it, but A Rod was really immune to anything anyway. A Rod was the shit. He I was loved A Rod. Here's a pitch, and that is foul ball. Yeah, A Rod. I don't. Everyone can don't say what, what they mean. want, but he he is for he's got to be a Hall of Famer. The fact he's not is a crime. Yeah. 
I don't care what anybody says. A Rod was was probably the best Mariner next to Junior. That's like that makes history. us two of us only. Yeah, like I don't care about the PEDs. I don't care about any of that. A Rod was talent. His 2000 season was his was actually his best season in terms of efficiency. A 10 war, and he didn't do it yeah. with any other season, including Yankees and Texas, and those were even better years. And now we're looking at 02 for Crawford. He's got to do something. Here's the pitch, and that is outside for a ball. If the Mariners cannot score on this, that would be embarrassing. At least put it in the gap somewhere. If we have last year's Crawford, we're easily scoring with him. Garver and Moore on base, trying to score. Here's the pitch, and that is low for a ball. Good eye. We're at the bottom of the fourth, still one nothing Mariners, but we know that this one nothing lead is not going to be enough. But yeah, A-Rod's, A-Rod's 98 was nice, too. Yee, 42 home runs and 46 stolen bases. And I didn't even yeah. look. <laughs> yeah. Julio Rodriguez on deck will bat if... Crawford prolongs the inning. And now here is the pitch. And now here's a line drive fouled. Yeah, but yeah, you're right. The uh, the 2000 season, 41 homers, 132 RBI, a 420 OBP. And he his OPS was a, a, a 1.026 uh, OPS, a, a 163 OPS plus. Dude, that is insanity. 80 playing 81 games at T-Mobile Park. 2-2. Two, two. And check swing. Did he go? He did not. Are we talking 2000 A-Rod or 98 A-Rod? 2000 A-Rod. 2000 A-Rod. He did that with T-Mobile, yeah. 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 And he actually missed time because he collided with Alex Cora in 2000 against the Dodgers. <laughs> I just got a uh, I just got a slick little Three, two team. pitch. And that is ball four. Take your base. And the bases are loaded for loaded Julio again. Rodriguez. What are you liking? Because he gets on base. This is absolutely an opportunity. Like, Julio, this is your moment to shine. And that was really close. I think CB Bucknor calls that a strike three. Angel Hernandez would have called that strike three. He would have been like, ball, ball. no, no, strike three. That would have been Angel Hernandez. <laughs> Julio, don't oh, yeah. and do something. Does anything. I'm not even asking for a grand slam. Just asking for just anything that get an out. How about a, how a yeah? How about a how about a nice little base hit up the box to score too? Oh, yes. hey, by the way, I got a ping from my co-host Chris, who's down in Tacoma watching the Rainiers, and he said, "You know, you're in Tacoma when Dallas Keuchel strikes out uh, Colton Wong." <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go to, to a Tacoma game. I just have to. I'm due. Yeah, he's all about the Tacoma Rainiers. I want to try to make it like a once a month thing where I go to these minor league games because they are they are a lot more fun and intimate than major league baseball games. And now here is Julio Rodriguez. Let's go. He is, all right, Julio. Let's make something happen. And now here's the pitch. And a swing and a miss. And all I can say is here we go again. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing, right? Let's let's not let's not do the Julio chant because no. All that does all that does is encourage him. Here's and, the pitch. You know. And now here's the line drive, and that's going to drop in for a base hit. And that is bobbled by Bellinger. That should at least get two runs in. And that is going to be two runs. And that is a two RBI effort by Julio Rodriguez. Boom. And he did exactly, I think, what we asked him to do. Not do that's anything too cute. Yeah, you don't need you don't need a grand slam in this situation. All you need is to put a good swing on the you know put a good swing on the ball, and uh, he did. Congrats, Julio. That's exactly that was huge. What we needed. This is exactly what we were talking about at the top of the top of the program. If there's you know if there's anybody that needs a good game, it's Julio. And he is showing it right now. And now here is Ty France. Can he extend the game further? Here's the pitch. And now here's the line drive. And that is another base hit. Here comes another run. That's going to be 4-0 Mariners. Scoring is Crawford. And what a hit by Ty France immediately. Boom. Great hit by Ty. And 87 pitches for the Cubs. For the starter, Jordan Hicks. You would think that, that this could be his final inning. Yeah, if he even yeah. makes it out, if he 
even if he may uh, if he makes it out. Yeah. By the that way, that uh, that that swing by Julio, that little base hit, was not really that impressive of a swing. But as you know, it it got the job done. It did get the job done. And now let's see who is batting. I think this is Mitch Haniger, one of the more beloved Mariner players in history. And now here is the pitch, and that is a ball. And we got some activity in the bullpen. That is Drew Smiley, who was yep. supposed to be part of the 2017 Mariners, but then injuries killed his season. Yeah. And now here is with Drew. And now here's a 2-0 pitch, and that is up high for a ball. The sad thing about 2017, the offense was there. It's just they had absolutely zero pitching. Zero pitching. Everyone yeah. was hurt. Felix was pretty much that really was like, yeah, I think Felix is done kind of year. Right. Right. And here's the pitch. And that is a strike. And that's a shame some, too. Cause, Cause Felix was like 28, 29. You know what he I mean? He was already but, broken. Yeah. It's like, you know, he like, you like people forget that he started pitching when he was like 19, 20. Yeesh. And now here is the three, one pitch swing and a miss strike two. And some say that 2015 was the start of his decline because that was the season where he finally struck out below 200 hitters. And that's when at least some people questions like, Ooh, Felix is not looking the same weight problems. Right. Oh, well that was nothing new. Cause Felix, Felix would show up to spring training overweight all the time. He did. But you know, the, but the, uh, the pitch. You know, here's a ground ball foul. Yeah. But the, you know, the crazy thing though, is that, you know, the Mariners rode him, rode him like a horse though. You're talking about, a, you know, a dude that averaged 200 innings pitch for what, eight, nine years. I felt bad for the guy. He, yeah. he did a lot for the team and very little in return with the exception of a Cy Young. And now here he, is the three, two pitch swing and a miss strike three. And that will retire the side. But however, the Mariners do get four run, a uh, three runs in off of a yep. bases loaded by Julio Rodriguez and Ty France adding to it. We are now up four nothing, and give me a breather because I did a lot of calling that one. SeatGeek is a mobile ticketing app for sporting events, concerts, and other events. They make the buying experience easier by the app ranking each ticket from 0 to 10 to see if you are getting a good deal, and you can see exactly where you are sitting. I regularly use that app, and I have had nothing but a fantastic experience with SeatGeek. Use my promo code ROOFTOPSPORTS to get $20 off of your first purchase. Link to the code, app, and website will be in the description, so take advantage, and thank you. Yep, thank you very yep. much. And use that promo code if you're planning to go to tomorrow's game against the Mar or against the Chicago Cubs. Yeah, the uh, I, uh, I I did feel bad for Julio in the context that he committed he committed himself long term to the Mariners. Uh, he got the contract, but the thing about it was is that he uh, he never asked to be traded. He never asked you know wanted to get out. Even at he that point, of the, yeah, even at the point of the career when when you would think that being in the playoffs might be something that he might want to experience and go to a contender. He never asked for his way out of, out of Seattle. Which is, and there yeah, was a point was after 2012, I was actually begging Felix to leave. I was like, Felix, just go. You're getting screwed. It's not worth it. And, but he was like, Nope, the man's loyal. Yeah. You know, it, I actually was like by 2014, I was thinking that, that it would happen uh, because, you know, you have to like 2010, 11, 12, were just, just brutal, horrible. just brutal. And it's like, you know, losing, losing takes it like, you know, from a fan's perspective, losing does take a toll, but just imagine being in that clubhouse, starting the season, taking a look around and just knowing that this is probably going to be a 90 loss season. I, cause you have to like, I, those are those, you know, that was the era of Mike Carp. You know what I mean? You, you, Mike you're Carp talking is to, supposed to be the future. Justin yeah. Smoke, like just, there was just, still yeah. upside on that offense. It's just they just couldn't get it together. You know, it's like you like. I mean, we're talking about guys that were basically quad A players, and uh, and it's you know it, it's tough being a, a somebody as good as Felix was looking around, and you're just like, oh boy, man. I was as I was really up about that youth movement, like Nick Franklin, Brad Miller. And now we're but speak of we're in the fifth inning. Here's the pitch, and that is a strike. Like it's not like the talent was bad or anything. It was just there was just no development. Yeah, and Jack sure. Z like and Jack Z nuked most of his development team as well because 
he got very egotistical. And now here's the 0-1 pitch. And that is going to be, did he go? And that is, no, he did not. But I actually like Zorenzik at the at least in the first two years. And then 20 after 2012, I was like, nah, I'm done. And now we're looking at Mike Hal Halkman, I think. And now oh, yeah. here is oh. the pitch. Here's ground ball foul. Oh, I forgot about Jack Cust. <laughs> Jack Cust. My friend yeah. called him Jack Bust. Trayvon Robinson. Michael he made Stunders. that amazing catch in left field off the Tory Hunter. Mike Carp. Although I'll say this for Mike Carp, his 2012 wasn't wasn't terrible. 2011. Here's the pitch, and that's no, a high for a ball. He in, had like 12 uh, it, oh, yeah, runs in like yeah like 60 right. something games. That was good. Yeah. Yep. I thought he was going to be so, the leader of the team. Yep. Yeah, 79 games. Yeah. Here's a two two. That wasn't and too here's bad. Here's a fly ball to left field, and Dylan Moore. He is there. He makes the catch, and that is one down. And 59 pitches for Miller. Very oh, efficient. Wow. Well, what I like about this is the fact that now that the Mariner offense works out, we're you know we're in the top of the fifth, so the Mariner offense did what they were supposed to do, which was you know give give Bryce Miller a three three plus lead. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, and then just get, hold get him comfortably. Can. Yeah, just. Just getting getting comfortable so he doesn't feel like he needs to be perfect. Uh and uh I wouldn't be surprised if uh you know if Bryce cruises cruises. Yeah, just his, like what we saw out of um, yeah. Logan Gilbert, where he was he had to play perfect and yeah. it was so bad that you couldn't even blame him for that Vlad home run. I couldn't blame him one bit. Not at all. And now we're looking at the 0 1 count and the pitch clock going down. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, and a nice swing and a miss job, and that is now an 0 and 2 count. Now we're at 61 pitches. And the 2012 Mariners, Hannah, they went 75 and 87. And now here's the 0 2 swing and a miss, strike three. And I remember after 2014, when I saw them getting Nelson Cruz, I was the one fan that looked like how much they lost. They lost Chris Young, they lost Michael Saunders. And because of that, I said, nah, we still don't have it. And everyone's like, but we got Nelson Cruz. But we lost these guys. And it really showed, unfortunately. Oh, I forgot about Casper Wells. I love Casper Wells, the friendly ghost. Now here's the pitch. And that is a strike. Oh, I remember the Jesus Montero trade. Oh, I remember. Uh, cost, not Michael Pineda. Michael Pineda. That was I a like Pineda. That was a bad trade. Now here's the 01 because they couldn't get Prince Fielder. Well, they didn't even try to get Prince Fielder anyway. They didn't try. So that was like uh, the Prince Fielder move. The uh the uh the one that made no sense at all, uh well, at least the return value was the uh uh was the Doug Fister trade to Detroit. Charlie Furbush and yeah. Casper Wells, and only Furbush yeah. was the only one that made it out. <laughs> Fister was Fister was a fantastic pitcher. Mm. And now we're looking at a two-one. And now here Houston. is the pitch. That is up high yeah. for a ball. Goes and the other Detroit. thing that a lot of people should have saw red flags on Zorenzik was when he was reacting to the Albert Pujols signing. He was like, "Wait, what? That just happened?" I'm like, "How do you not know that, <laughs> or not paying attention?" Well, you know, any any time, any time a. Any time a GM reacts to what your uh, division rival is doing, it's a it's somebody that probably shouldn't be a GM. And we're looking at a three two count. And now here's the three two pitch. And now here's a ground ball foul. <laughs> Fister and Furbush, what a combo! <laughs> if only the Mariners uh, brought back Fister at some point, and I think they could have in like those. Maybe in the Depoto days. And now we're looking at the three two. And now here's the pitch. And that is inside for ball four. So take your base. <laughs> now we got a runner on first base. And now up yep. to the plate, it is going to be Suzuki. And then after that, you got Bellinger. So you kind of want to get out of this inning fast before yes, you do. Before things can get out of control because this is a an offensive heavy, heavy team in the Chicago Cubs. Well, and you know Suzuki had a uh, had a nice little single his last time up. 
odds to make the postseason. They say the Mariners, if you bet a, if you bet for them, you'll win some money. And that's I did. Time. I did indeed at uh, MGM Grand Detroit. I put uh, I think the Mariners were going off at, at eight hundred to one, and I put sixty down. So there you go. If they win the World Series, I'll take home twelve hundred dollars. Do it. And now here is the pitch to Suzuki going to be, and that is a foul ball. As much as I don't like gambling much, I will say I do get really fun vibes out of at least going to a casino just to get the food. Oh, for sure. Food is amazing. It's a great place to just chill out, hang out. I went to a casino for a birthday party. It was a, it was a blast. And now here's the O2 not- pitch. Foul ball. I'm not a big casino guy at all, uh, but uh, you're right. You're right about, you know, like uh, casinos like uh, Tulalip or uh, Muckleshoot. They do. Yeah. Have, they do. They do. Definitely do have uh, excellent food. Looks I like would get not, more it, out of a casino than a nightclub. And I don't even go to nightclubs. Gross. gross. And now here ah. is going to be the O2 pitch. And Bryce Miller's trying to find that strike zone to get that third strike. It seems when he's on strike two, he kind of struggles a little bit. Now he's on 73 pitches, so he's getting taxed a little bit more. And that's where you don't want it to happen because then Scott Serve is like, you done, boy. And now here is going to be the one-two pitch. Now here's a ground ball that should be playable. The throw to first, and it's in time, just barely. And we go to the top, bottom of the fifth. Mariners are up. Four nothing. Cool. Yep. Uh, ASJ, uh, HSJ in the chat room said he just read, they just remembered Tom Wilhelmson and they don't know why. Of course, man, Tom Wilhelmson had the like bartender. Uh, had the bartender. He had that nice little two year stretch there for a while. He did. And then 2013 just went. Yep. Just blue saves left and right. The bartender. Yeah. Wilhelmson at least had a, had a really cool fun comeback story. At least he got two years out of it. Don't forget Brandon League, very erratic closer. Brandon League, yep. Former Toronto Blue Jay. Brandon League. I'm trying to remember who else was back in those early 2010s. Oh, uh, oh, uh, it was what year was the bullpen where they had the uh, where they had the uh, Sparta masks in the bullpen? They would they would keep like the the masks on. Uh, I don't remember. I think it might have been 20. Let's see. Let's see what year it was. I remember Stephen Pryor should have been a good pitcher, and then injuries killed his career. Steve Delabar. <laughs> oh, Luke French. Yeah, Luke. <laughs> Luke French. Let's not what forget the, about what was the year that we had David Ardsma. 20, 2009. 20, 2009 to 2010. Yeah, David Ardsma. Uh, John Wetland was the pitching co- the bullpen coach in 2009. Yeah, David Ardsma, Mark Lowe, Miguel Batista, Sean White, Sean Kelly. Oh, Miguel Batista. Oy. Oh, yeah. Horacio Ramirez. Let's trade Rafael Soriano for that. Uh, pretty much Jamie nuked our Wright. bullpen. I remember we had Jamie Wright. Let's go all the even more back. We had JJ Putz, who was a fantastic pitcher, and then yep. disappeared in 2008. And we are back from the break, and we are in the bottom of the fifth inning. We got a new pitcher in Drew Smiley, the former Mariner who didn't even pitch for the Mariners due to a terrible injury which took him out for the entire season. And now here is the pitch. I would say that if everyone was healthy in 2017, I think they could have made the playoffs if everyone was healthy. But unfortunately, nobody was. And Felix was on his downfall. And now here's the pitch. And and Smiley's got that huge curveball. Good to see that Drew Smiley's still hanging around in this league. Yeah, he, he can be effective, man. He really is. Here's the pitch. Now, here's a line drive foul. Just foul. Just foul. And we're looking at a one-two count for 
Jorge Polanco. You know that you know Drew's got you know Drew's in that little uh, long man One, situation. Two. Up high for a ball, two and two. Got twenty five viewers right now, eleven on YouTube. And let's take a look. And here's a pitch, and that is a foul ball. Already crossed a hundred in just five innings. People really came in for the because of the whole Apple thing. Uh, Hannah, I wouldn't say so quite yet. You never know. So yeah, four yeah, Here's a pitch. And that is a ball three and two. And Polanco has been working the count much better these, this game than what I'm used to. Absolutely. Uh, and, and here's the, the you know, two. And you know, the ball four, take your base. Yeah, yeah the ability to uh, work a count full and then it's what you like to see, the ability to get on base. This is what do you uh, like him? He gets on base. Picking up, uh, picking up right where, uh, right where they left off the last inning. Getting, uh, getting the leadoff runner on. And now we, who do we got next to bat? I believe it's going to be it's Mitch Garver. Here's the pitch. Now here's a five ball, more like a pop up, and that may not do much. And he makes the catch, and we got one down. And next up to the bat, it is going to be Cal Raleigh, the big dumper. Let's see if dumper can make some things happen. Would be nice for the dumper to to do some yeah. things. And he uh, he he in his uh, in his two at bats against uh, against Wicks, he uh, was nowhere nowhere near making contact. So it would be nice to see Cal uh, put together a good at bat. Would be really nice. And Cal Raleigh, he is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Hasn't done good. And it's not and none of his batting his at bats were any good either. He's batting 184 with two home runs so far. And now here's the pitch. And that is going to be a ball. Well below the Mendoza line. Cal Raleigh. Big dumper. Catcher of the Mariners. Polanco at first base. He's got somewhat of a lead. Smiley checks the runner. And now here's the 2-0. Swing and a miss. And Drew Smiley's going to kill you with that curveball. Yeah, but you know, the the biggest problem with uh the biggest problem with Smiley is he has a tendency to leave that curveball up out of the plate. And uh, you know, he's you here's know, the he's runner not... goes and the throw to second, and yep, they, that was a fool. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Pollock goes like, oh, okay, you want to go? Okay, go. Let's see how fast he can go. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Polanco. Yeah. Just, just 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 great. And I'm looking at his uh savant for Drew Smiley. He doesn't even pitch a fastball. Yeah, I mean he's uh he is your he's your classic soft tossing lefty and it's uh you know location is everything with Smiley but and you know the the the, the thing about Smiley is that he will leave things up out of the plate and you know it's uh this is actually a very advantageous uh inning for the Mariners uh if You're they just it. Yeah, I mean if they just oh yeah and there's two, two. Go. and another strikeout and that is strike 3. Maybe I should have added Smiley to my my fantasy team we go to top of the six <laughs> still four nothing Polanco. okay worst mariners team you ever saw the and, worst mariners uh, team yeah. i ever saw i would have I'm, to say i would have to say and i think this might be an easy one uh and don't get me wrong i think i think it's easy to say the 2010 2010 season with all the expectations after the uh the Cliff Lee the Cliff Lee trade a lot of people thought that the Mariners were going to you know be that sheep pick to uh to uh you know make the playoffs and they they bottomed out although that was a really bad team. Uh I think it was the I think it may have been the 
2000. I got my answer already, but I'll I'll I, say it I once think you it, say it. I think it may have been the hold on, let me see real quick. Hmm. It may have, well, yeah, I guess I'm going to say 2010. Uh, because, you know, 2010, you know, outside of Russell Brannion, who hit 31, who hit 31 bombs that year, uh, that was kind of a gross team, the 2010 team. Rob Johnson behind the plate. Jose Lopez, Unieski, Betancourt, Vladimir, Ballantine. Pat you Griffey. Know, yeah, Franklin Gutierrez was decent. Uh, yeah, that and that was the uh that was the you know the uh you know the um the year that Griffey uh, Griffey took off. Ish. Uh, 2010 was when he took off when he just fled yeah. the but then now here's like Hold on, we got we're back from the break. Here's the pitch, yeah. and that is a strike. Yeah, it was it was Adam Moore behind the plate, Casey Kochman at hey. first base, Sean Figgins at second base, Josh Wilson at short. They oh. moved Lopez, they moved Lopez to third, and he wasn't much better there. Michael Saunders, Franklin Gutierrez, Ichiro was still obviously Ichiro is still Ichiro, and then Russell Brannion. They moved to the DH, but then you know, that was the year they got Milton Bradley. Jack Wilson was on that bench. Matt Tuiasasopo, Ryan Langerhans. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the rotation. Oh, pitch. Was, Up high for a ball. You know, the rotation was uh, Felix Hernandez, Vargas, Fister, Ryan Roland Smith was in that rotation. The hyphen. David, yeah, David Pauly. I would say that that probably, that probably, like when you look at just the, that roster and now here's general. a line drive and caught by Crawford. Yeah, that was, that was an ugly roster. Do you think it was uglier than 2008? Uh, 2008 was pretty ugly, but you know, I think wasn't the, what was, what year did we get Jose Vidro? 2004, 2007. 2007. Okay. He was decent in his first year, but I'd say 2008 was the worst because you, you lost with a hundred million dollar yeah. payroll. Yeah. And had yeah, all the expectations. Lie. Mojo's rising. Right. Here is the pitch. And that has popped up. And this is the funny thing about 2008. Kenji, you know, you had Kenji Jojima. Richie Sexton hit 30. Oh, hit a you know, Yeah, this was the bad year. Uh, yeah, Kenji Jojima, Richie Sexton, Jose Lopez, Unieski Betancourt, Beltre, Raul Ibanez. So there, there was your 20 home run hitters. Jeremy Reed. Ichiro Suzuki, Jose Vidro, their bench was just garbage. Uh, they had dude, nothing. Tug, Tug Hewlett was on that. Made it. Uh, made it. Miguel Cairo. Miguel Cairo. Yeah, Carlos Silva, Eric Bedard. Here's the pitch, and no, I thought that was strike three. No, Bedard wasn't terrible that year, but he was injured. He yeah. didn't, he didn't have Only a healthy season. Oh, 2011. Right. right. Uh, only pitched in 81 innings that year. Carlos Silva, that was that was pretty bad. Washburn was pretty bad. Washburn was a terrible signing. <laughs> yeah, he was already washed. He was Kostinsa. already washed burned. Oh, yeah. That, here's, that one too. here's a ground oh, ball yeah. right to Urias, the throw to first, and it's in time. Got two outs. I forgot we had Ryan Fearbin and Cha Song Beck. Chasson Beck had like one good season. Two thousand. I forgot about that. I forgot about Cha. Um, Raul Ibanez. How many U's are in Raul? Eight. Sometimes eight. <laughs> sometimes three. Nice. Sometimes seven. Sometimes ten. I've actually met Raul. He's not exactly the easiest person to talk to. He always sounded like he was on edge. Here's the pitch. Yeah, I can see that. I can right. see that. When I was uh when I was working at Best Buy, I saw him and like when I started talking to him, I didn't even acknowledge him as Raleigh Bonyas. I was like, "Hey, how's it going?" And he's like, "Hey, you have this. I hope you do." I was like, "Whoa, 
It was scary. <laughs> Easy there, Chopper. Uh, you know the funny thing. And that is a strike. I used to run into Ryan Roland Smith at the Starbucks in the Soto right across the street from Acrina on First Avenue. I would do. Yeah. I would. I would. I would run into Ryan Roland Smith a lot. And uh, tell you what, man, uh, nicest Here's dude you'll ever meet. Yeah, but that's a. I'm trying to crash into Rick Riz because I know exactly which place he goes to. He lives in Issaquah, so hoping yep. to like. Yep. Yep. He sure does. Hope hoping to connect with him at some point and tell me, Hey, I do play by play too. Uh, yeah. Riz is, Riz is awesome. I, uh, when I, uh, ha I had Good. credentials. You had credentials. I had credentials for the 2013 and 2014 season. So I talked to Riz quite a bit and Dave Sims, both great guys. Uh, and you know, the, the, it's distracting looking at Rick Riz cause he wears the two pay make no mistake. He wears a two pay two, two and foul ball. And, you know, like when you're talking, when you're talking and he's not really tall either. So, you know, we're kind of like head to head. And so you can't help but notice, uh, you know, Riz, uh, Rizzo's, tat, uh, Rizzo's uh, uh, toupee, but hell of a nice guy, though. He really is. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. And now here's Happy a two, two. Here's a ground ball right to your rise, cutting it. Oh, and... He's still out. What a play. <laughs> wow. I, you know, the thing I like about uh, Riz is like, he'll, he'll shout out a happy birthday. Happy birthday to Ethel Johnson. Who's 92 years young today. Holy smokes. <laughs> Here's a look at the happy totals. <laughs> yeah. The happy totals. Rick Riz TV was oh. something else. Like when I was a yeah, kid, I, I preferred Rick over Dave. No, the, the great one was uh was Captain Obvious, Ron Fairley. Ron Fairley was Captain Obvious. He was the he was the color guy to Dave Niehaus on the uh on the TV yeah. and on um, the TV and broadcast. That was built to the deep left field and the Mariners are down. Yes, you can tell, you can tell that was that was really hit, <laughs> really, really dang good. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. He was like uh uh he was like, you know, with a runner on third base, you know, and a base hit, he'll be looking to score. It's like, yeah, well, no shit. <laughs> Yeah, but Ron was also a great guy too. Uh, I, I I had good times talking with Ron Fairley back in Ron the day. Fa Ron Fairley, and then oh, Dave Henderson was the most chill. He's like, yeah, and after this walk, there's an opportunity for the Mariners to do something substantial. I just realized that like half the people that we grew up with are gone. Like Henderson's gone. Mm -hmm. Uh. See now, if you know old school Mariner fans will remember the name Ken Levine. I do. so so uh, there was a time where Rick Riz left the Mariner organization. Like I think this might have been like the late eighties. No, it was it was before that. It was like in it was like in ninety ninety one somewhere around there. He went to Detroit for a couple of years ago and did the radio play by play for the uh, for the Tigers. And in his in his absence, stepped in Ken Levine. And if you know anything about Ken Levine, he was the guy who was the main writer on the TV show MASH. He was a TV writer, but he was also a uh, he also did the play by play. And Ken Levine, Ken Levine was a, a, a great play by play guy. And he like and he was only in town for a couple of years because Riz ended up coming back. Mm. I'm, I'm so glad he came back. Yeah. So that's who line. I grew up with watching. And I don't forget Dave Valley always sounds excited and fired up. Yeah, Dave, Dave Valley is it is in, in his jersey accent. Yeah. They're showing Dave oh Valley. my gosh. Look at Griffey in his 2006 World Baseball Classic. 2006 was when his body he finally gave up. His his metabolism finally gave out. Yeah, no, that's that's when he gave up and said, you know what? He was like, you know what? Yeah, give me them carbs. I thought he gave up going to two thousand, and that's when it's and his metabolism was still holding up. And then by thirty five or something, he's like, "Nope, I'm done." <laughs> Here's well, the pitch. You, that's a strike. Right. And it may have been two thousand because he won comeback player of the year one year, and I think it might have been two thousand six. Because uh, you know. One of those years, uh, he won. Now yeah, here's he won a fly back. ball to left field. That's going to be blooping. And that is going to be caught. What a diving lighting catch by Hap. Yeah. The, uh, 
like after he got traded to Cincinnati, like within two years, he had the he had the uh, meniscus tear in spring training. That dude just got was chronically injured. Some say, do you do you believe this that his work ethic wasn't exactly the best, even with the Mariners? Some well, say that, and the Kingdom turf didn't help either. Yeah, but and then you he, know, play, that, he goes to Synergy Field with also an equally horrible turf. Well, but that being said, though, the only time Junior really seriously got hurt, it wasn't you know it wasn't a leg injury. It wasn't you know what I mean. It wasn't one of those injuries. Uh, it was the, uh, you know, it was the hand injury in 96, uh, 95, but you know, that's the thing. It's like, you know, he seemed you, it, it, in most of his Mariner career, he was durable. That was the one thing that he was. And then for whatever reason, it was like a flip, flip, you know, flip of a switch. But that being said, it also could have been that when he went to Cincinnati, he got that new contract as a part of the trade. He ended up signing that new contract. So that also, and we got know, two outs some, by the way, on a pop-up by, Luis Urias. And the other thing is he also didn't have Jay Buhner and Lou Pinella to like keep him accountable. That that also could be as well, too. But some players do get paid and stop trying. And here's JP Crawford. And now here is the pitch who has struggled. And now here's a ground ball. And is that going to get through? No. And the throw to first. And they drops it. That's got to be an error. That's not going to be a base hit. But JP Crawford yeah. gets on base. And that's how the last time that was like similar to Griffey's last at bat. He got safely off of an error by Justin Moore now. And I remember like, they were like trying to tease the fact that, Hey, maybe Griffey can have just one more game winning home run. And everyone's I like, remember, nah, it's not going to happen. I remember Ken Griffey Jr.'s last safe go field home run. It was 2009, 630 against Texas. And it just it was like a line out, a line home run. Yeah. Now here yep. is Julio, and that is a ball. Yeah. The funniest part was when he just drove off with two Mountain Dews, and then Jay Buner's like texting, like, dude, where are you? Chances are he probably didn't even answer that text message. I'm sure he probably did. I I'm sure he did. Those two are tight. Oh, you think so? He's like, Yeah, those Hey, those where are you? Probably, I'm going to my in dad. Montana. I'm in Wait. Montana. <laughs> At a gas station. <laughs> yeah. That was the wildest. And by the way, uh, Larry LaRue was former TNT writer. Larry LaRue was the one that broke that story. And uh, the Mariners were not happy with LaRue. Pulled his credential. Oh, wow. Yeah. They gave it back, but they pulled his, cred cred they pulled his credential. Pretty disastrous year. <laughs> We're well, looking yeah. at yeah. a two-one shot for Masu. Julio. Can he do something? Here's the pitch, and a swing and a miss, strike two. I actually liked Wakamatsu. I actually had high hopes for him, but he hasn't really managed since. No, no, my that, you know my ten season ruined him. My favorite post Lou Pinilla manager was Bob Milton. I like Bob. Mine, mine was Hargrove. Yeah, I, I was a big Grover guy too. Here's a two. -two. I, I was kind. I was kind of fond of Eric Wedge too. I liked Eric Wedge. Eric Wedge, yeah. I would. I mean, yeah. Imagine if Eric Wedge, Hargrove, or Melvin had this team. Yeah, it would have been it a little be, bit different. They would be. They would. They would definitely be playing a lot different. Now here's the two-two, and a swing and a miss, strike three. Down goes Julio Rodriguez. He's having a little chatter with the umpire for whatever reason. Didn't think it was necessary, but we go to the top of the six innings, still four nothing. Yeah, if uh, if if Bob Melvin had this this year's squad, it would be different. Grover is Grover is so old school. Like I I, I would probably think eventually he would get fired by Depo fired by Depoto, just because you know he's not one of those type of guys that uh, he he he's one of those old school guys that wants to be a left alone to do his job. Yep. That sounds about right. I mean, look yep. at what happened with Billy Bean and Art, Art Howell. Howell. Art mm -hmm. Howell's like, no, let me do my job. And Billy Bean's like, no. He's like micromanaging, going, no, yo, you're going to start Hatterberg, but I like Pena. Yeah. But Hatterberg gets on <laughs> baseball. But I'm going to play him. Fine. I'll trade him. Yeah. 
<laughs> I like my favorite part of the Moneyball movie was 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 when Paul De Podesta or Peter Brand, Jonah Peter Hill, Brand. he looked really nervous. And Bill is like, "Hey, yeah, tell tell Carlos that he's been traded." Wait, what? Me? Part of the job. So he does it. He looks so nervous. Carlos, you have been traded. That's it. No, the yep, here's the information. The uh, my favorite part of the movie was during spring training where. You know, uh, where Brad Pitt turns to him and says, this better work. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and I think as soon as Carlos Pena walks out, I think deep down he was like, yes, I just told him. I just told him. I just said, I just said someone got traded. Oh, Jeremy. Hey, what's up? Yeah, you've been traded. Can you imagine the set of balls Billy Bean had to turn down the Boston Red Sox? That's they, 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 yeah, they they were offering the most money, you know, the he to make him the highest paid GM, and he turned them down because there was unfinished business to do in Oakland. Respect. And uh, obviously, uh, what's his ass? Uh, uh, why can't I think of his name now? Uh, you know the the guy who ended up going to Chicago. Um, I don't he's know. now with Ma he's now with Major League Baseball. Uh, uh, Theo Epstein. Theo Epstein steps in and breaks the curse, but. Uh, Mariners yeah, that, that, that curse. <laughs> that that you have to have a humongous set of balls on you to turn down turn down not just the money but you know the prestige of the Red Sox of trying to break the curse. But you know what though? That being said, though, if Billy Bean ended up in Boston, you know there's a good shot that they don't break the curse because of his methods. Know, well, you know, don't get me wrong. I mean. Theo Epstein employed the same, you know, the same methods. It's just, you know, certain things have to conspire in a certain way in order for certain results. And, you know, I, I, I think well, it worked out. It worked out. For everyone. I mean, yeah. Billy, well, Bean's Billy still, Bean's, um, he's a minority owner of the Oakland days. Yeah. Yeah. He sure is. But, you know, I, but then, but then again, you know, he had success in Oakland. We're looking at the one, one pitch and yes, he did in seventh inning. He's still in and here's the pitch. And a swing and a miss, and they're still keeping Miller in. And I would think that, considering how the lead is at 91 pitches, I would think that this is the last inning. And if oh, there is that. one man on oh, base, okay. Scott Service is going to pull him out because he just does that. You're probably, you're probably right. Oh, hey, by the way, Suarez, uh, Unigenio Suarez went deep uh, for the Diamondbacks to tie the game, I believe, in the seventh inning. So this is for you, Eugenio Suarez. All right, guys, goodbye zone, and don't forget it. Stop it. I miss that so much. And now here is the two-two pitch, and that is a ball. And by the time the Arizona Diamondbacks are yeah. back in April, you expect that Suarez is going to get an, an ovation that may cause an yeah. earthquake. I don't know what the what I don't know what the big the 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 big deal about Suarez was. His tw his 2022 was good. His 2023 was not. But yet everybody just loves the. I hate using this term, but the good vibes. Apparently, he had the good vibes. Me too. He did. I mean, it helped Julio. Like it helped him kept keep it cool. I would probably think the guy that helped Julio the most was uh, uh, it was in 2022 when they brought back Carlos Santana. Carlo, yeah, I really I actually wanted him back for the next season. I did. I did too. I did too. He was that quiet leader. Quiet leader. Yeah. Can Three, you imagine? Two, pitch. Foul ball. Can if you the imagine? Mariners just stood pat, they probably would have went yeah. further. If they well, just I would, stood I would imagine if they had Carlos Santana or Mitch Hanniger starting in DH in 2023 instead of Tommy LaStella. Uh, I mean? And Cooper Hummel. And Cooper Hummel. So it felt like a mini post 95 season off season. Here's the pitch swing and a miss strike three. 2022 was like that poor, poor man. 95. Well, you know, the, the 20, the 2022 off season leading into that season was probably the best off season. The Mariners have had in 25 years. When you think about Nine, what they aside ended up from 95 off season or 2000 off season was also underrated. Yeah, well, and also the 2001 offseason was was pretty good too. I mean, granted, A Rod left, but we also got Ichiro and Boone and um, uh, some of those pieces. Yeah, some of those guys. 2000 but, uh, was when they built the bullpen and got yeah. Mike Cameron out yeah. of Griffey. Yep. Uh, but if you think, I mean, we got the reigning AL Cy Young Award. We ended up getting two All Stars and Gino Suarez and Jesse Winker in the same deal. 
I mean, we got Adam Frazier and another. That deal was a was killer also, deal. Yeah, the only thing it I mean, didn't cost, it did cost Fraley though. Yeah, I like Fraley. Fraley. Yeah, but what has Fraley done since? He actually has had okay seasons. He still gets on base. Yeah. That's and cool. now here is the two zero pitch, and that is a pie for a ball. And speak of, I'm going to look at Fraley's numbers since he, since he left. But yeah, I mean, when you have Suarez at the time, then yeah, you yeah. got yeah. you got to take sure. Suarez. Fraley is batting 400. He has played in nine games. Here's the pitch. He's very much part of it, and that's going to be ball four. And I would think that this may be it. And Scott Service, he, yep, he's going to walk out. That is absolutely no surprise. 100 yep. pitches for Bryce Miller. You couldn't ask anything more of him. Yep, six and a third. You give, him a, give him a standing ovation. Yeah. With the a 4 nothing seven. lead, I feel maybe yep. more comfortable, comfortable about doing this. But I'm still gonna yeah. be nervous either way. And and, I, and it looks like Trent Thornton's gonna come in. At least Scott Service didn't pull him after 100, 100 after 78 pitches, so I'll give him that. Yeah. Well, you know, it's okay though. He had a he, you know, going six and a third. Uh this is exactly the type of this is exactly the type of start you were you were wanting to see to kick off this uh to kick off the series. So yeah, Bryce Miller deserves every bit of that ovation. Great. Great outing out of him. He got four strikeouts, three walks, but yeah. he made it up. That's okay. By at least making it playable on defense. Well, you know, the thing about it is, is three walks is a little high, but the 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 key to this is that none of those walks came back to bite him in the ass. He never did. And he only gave up three hits. So it's a, it's a good outing. But it's now we have outing. Trent Thornton, and hopefully he yeah. doesn't, he just doesn't screw it up. But well, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will say that, uh, w you know, they're, they're, uh, they're going into the strength of their bullpen. Uh, Trent Thornton, Gabe Spire, uh, Ryan Stanek. The, you know, the, it, it's set up, it's set up, especially with the off day yesterday, the bullpen, it, it, you know, the, uh, the entire bullpen is going to be available. So, uh, you know, right now Chicago is going into the, uh, what I like to call the teeth of the bullpen. So, yeah. Yeah, they are. Oh, the blizzard. Stop it. No, <laughs> I'm definitely getting blizzards a lot this summer. Unfortunately. They're oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. You're a blizzard guy. Heavy. I blizzard. like the I uh, I that's the thing is I'm a blizzard guy. A Reese's Reese's peanut butter cup. Blizzard I do guy Oreos. Oreos with, are with, he with heavy with with heavy butter cup. Woo. And Love now we got Trent cups. Thornton from the bullpen. In six games, he has a 1.50 ERA, three strikeouts, no walks. Yeah, he's off to a pretty good, good start this season. Here's the he's pitch, good. and that is a strike. And he does have a pretty good fastball too. He does. He's got a That's little good. bit of a funky delivery, but it's effective. It is. The Mariners got him from the trade last season. Now here's the pitch, and that is popped up and fouled. I thought he was a. Uh, I thought the Mariners picked him up off waivers. That's possible too. Yeah, because I think he was DFA'd by Chicago. Bryce Miller looking very happy. He's vibing with George Kirby. George Kirby's been having a struggling start. Here's the pitch, and that is fouled. But you would think that George Kirby is not going to continue that. I mean, and the thing was, it's not like in his last outing it was really his fault. It was just bad defense. That it was like those one or two yeah. plays and. And some guy played Jedi mind tricks on him on first yeah, base. Uh, right. It's not, it has nothing to do with velocity, you know, velocity or spin or anything like that. It was, it, it was the same thing with Castillo. It's like when, when things went wrong, it, you know, it, it got into his head and then, you know, it's, you know, the ability to stop the bleeding and, you know, yeah, unfortunately he couldn't. Couldn't do much about it. Yeah. And now here is the O2 pitch. And now here's a ground ball foul. We'd love to get out of this inning with the bases or not the bases with one man on base. Would love to get out of this inning with a man on base. Yeah. And there's, there's Logan Gilbert also vibing with Bryce Miller. It's a pretty good. I gotta, tell, I gotta tell you all three of those guys, Logan Gilbert, Bryce Miller, George Kirby are, are three goofy looking dudes. They're goofy, but they are some of the best in baseball right now. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Now we're looking at the, and the throw to first, and that gets away, and looks like they're going to be a free base. 
And now yep. we got a runner on second base. That was just not good heads up play by the Mariners. It was a bad throw and got through Ty France. But at least you have the opportunity to get the strikeout. They're throwing this, this throw. Yeah, but it was a bad throw. It was bounced, and then Ty couldn't even get it because he probably was like shocked when he saw it. He's like, whoa. And that got him the free base. And now we're looking at the 0-2, and here is the pitch. And that is fouled, and he is just fighting him off. Like, this is where it gets a bit concerning. And even at, if Thornton gets out of this inning quickly, I still think that he's they're still going to get another pitcher in. Yeah, that ball was, uh, you know, that ball down the right field line was, you know, to Ty's right, uh, and he had to go over the body uh, of the base runner. And, of course, you know, that was just – a terrible that throw was Thornton. up high for a ball. It looks like Thornton just didn't want to pitch a strike on that one. I mean, when you have that cushion, I can't blame him. He was trying to get him to fool. Maybe throw something down low this time. <clears throat> and we're looking at one, two. He has seven pitches so far already. Here's the pitch. Yep. And that is fouled again. And I think yep. my prediction is, I think he's going to throw in the dirt and whichever pitch he has, that breaks, maybe he'll use that. <laughs> Trent Thornton, he has a slider, a sinker, maybe use that sweeper or sinker and put it in the dirt. Now here's the pitch. And that is a pie for a ball. I lied. And that was a very close call. Michael, Michael Touch, Touchman. Michael Touchman. Ta Talkman. Touchman. Who knows? Now here is the 2-2 pitch, and that is fouled. Is that playable? Looks like it is. And Urias makes a sliding catch, and that will be two outs. Big out. Reminded me when I remember a play like, not really like that, but remember how Edgar Martinez got hurt in 96 where he collided with John Marzano? No. Well, Edgar, he started third base because Russ Davis was injured. Jeff Matto was bleh. Jeff Matto. <laughs> That's the one thing they didn't talk about, and you got to love these guys, was they would not talk about Jeff Matto because he was bad. Here's the pitch. And a swing and a miss. Yeah, and the, and, the, and, the, and the crazy thing is, you know, by that point, Edgar was solely a DH. Maybe you would see him play first base. Maybe. Maybe. Right? Is that yeah, it was the it was in 1991. Edgar had one of the most vicious hamstring tears, uh, and he was out for a, a very, very, very long time. Came back, couldn't play yet. You know, he was a third baseman prior, uh, and that's all she wrote on his. Uh, that's you know all all it was for his uh, for his career in the field. But that's uh, that's interesting that you say that though. He did, yeah. It was, it was just because yeah, Russ Davis was hurt, and then they finally. They didn't. Really, they could have used Luis Soho a little bit more, but he he wasn't really much in '96, I guess. <laughs> Interesting. Here's the pitch. Now here's a foul ball. But then they That's traded for Dave Hollins, and they yeah. it did cost Hollins. Ortiz or David Arias. <laughs> yep, I remember Dave Hollins. Yeah. And then they didn't even bring him back because they're like, yeah, Russ Davis is our guy. Russ Davis had he a good bat. Terrible. Here's the pitch. Eh, he was okay. Bat. Okay, bat, but terrible defense. Yeah, the the guy the guy preceding uh preceding uh Russ Davis uh ended up being David Bell and you know Bell was a little bit better. Yeah, Bell better. was actually a Bell was a solid solid little player, man. Like he didn't have to be that great, but he still That's exceeded true. the expectations and he Mariners got him off of Joy Cora, who then yeah. retired after the season with Cleveland. Yep. So that was like a nice little steel trade. Yeah. The, you know, David Bell came over as a second baseman and, uh, here's a lot ground ball right to Urias, the throw to first. And that is in time. And you got to give credit to Urias. He's been playing very well on defense. Yep. And we go to the bottom of the seventh stretch time. If you're a Mariner fan, <sighs> get up on your feet for the seventh inning stretch. All right, I will start this off. If you guys are ready, I hope you guys are. 
Wait, I wonder if they're... Wait, are they reviewing the call? Hold on. Oh, well, it looks like they no, they reverted it back. Huh? That scored in a run. Oh wow, I was wrong. I thought it was out. Yeah, that, that looked like a one. that look that looked like a routine ground ball. And now, wow, four to one. And that what, was like, uh, Ty Francis he was, was off the bag. You know, he looked like he was out. Maybe a challenge, Scott? Yeah, it looked like his foot was on the bag. He was out by a mile. Oh, wow, he's wow. out. That has to be. Oh, wow. There's no review. No, they just let it through. Wow. And now here's the pitch. And a swing and a miss, strike three, and now that will retire the side. But the Mariners give up a run on something I was wow. confused about. And now it's time to sing the seventh wow. inning stretch. All right, you started off with that whistle that leads up. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if they ever get back, so let's root, root, root for, root, root the, for the Mariners. If they don't win, it's a shame. Literally. For it's one, two, Three strikes, you're out at the old, the old ball game. game. Oh, no. no. We, we got to go. Gotta go now. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's too bad the Mariners gave up a run because I thought that was out. I wasn't paying on attention. Play, on a play that probably should have been challenged. Hey, scotty oh, Come on, man. Soft, soft, soft. Because Lou would have challenged that in a heartbeat. He'd be like, no, that's challenge right there. Lou would have came out of the dugout screaming. Before he could call a challenge. <laughs> And he would have kicked his hat, and then you have Griffey laughing in the dugout, picks up the base, tosses it. CB Bucknor's like, "Yep." Uh huh. By the way, that was that was awesome. I, re I the the two, the 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 actually the three that come to mind was when Lou was kicking his hat, uh, which was <laughs> which was beautiful. Uh, and then there was one where he came out, he came out piping hat, piping hot, and then he. Uh, he comes out, and then he goes to the batter's box and spreads dirt all over the home, <laughs> over home. And the plate. umpires, and the umpires, just like I think there's three of them. They're just looking. I'm going okay. Yeah. And then yeah, the the one where he uh, <laughs> the one where he picked up the base. That was like his last straw as a manager yeah. with the Mariners because he was frustrated not only. And Rich Eisen said on ESPN's like, yeah, it looks like he's frustrated that. Mariners have had a bad stretch and this happens. So he's yeah. popped off. Now here's Ty France. Got to extend the lead. Here's the pitch. And that is a ball. We had a four run lead. Now it's turned into a three run lead. Still enough a cushion though. You would we still got, like, you would, you would still like to see like maybe two more runs. I would like to see two more runs. And now here's the pitch. And that is a foul ball. Ty has yet to hit a home run. But he's not really known to be a home run hitter, at least what he was sort of back in 22 and 21, two of his best seasons in his career. He is hoping to get back to that form. And now here is the 1-1 pitch and a swing and a miss, strike two. Swing and a miss. It was very Keegan much. Thompson. Keegan Thompson. You mean Keenan Thompson? Keegan Thompson, who's on the hill for the Cubs. Ah, uh, 
And now here is the one-two pitch. And here's a ground ball. Here's Swanson with the play. And I really think either Swanson knew that he wasn't going to run it out or Ty France could have ran it out. I think it's a bit of both. <laughs> Dansby. Dansby Swanson. Former Atlanta Brave. Oh, he was an Atlanta Brave. Yeah, it's, he came up with the Braves. In 2016. And he got to experience a World Series. Now here's the pitch to Hanniger, and that's a nice Kirby for a for a ball. He's uh he's actually an Atlanta uh, he's actually an Atlanta grown kid and uh you know came up with the came up with the hometown team. Oh, and he left his hometown team. Maybe Chicago yeah. gave him a huge amount of bags. Here's the pitch. And here's a fly ball to deep right field, not deep enough. And we got two outs in a hurry. But yeah, 23 could have been the season to give Dansby that contract, but they didn't do it. Yep. And let me see. Where was it? Yep, he was a Georgia kid. Yep, that's for sure. And here is Polanco. Well, and I think it also happening. I think Here's it also co I think that also uh coincided with uh Arcea's uh emergence as the uh as the shortstop. So uh you know, they didn't have to they didn't have to pay Dansby when they had Arcea. Here's the pitch, and that is a strike. Nice little curveball. Uh, Polanco has been pitching, has been hitting decent just a little bit. Oh, that cotton candy. Honestly, I've grown to hate cotton candy. So surprised. It's just nothing more than a sugar ball. Here's the pitch, and that's foul ball. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's gross. Cotton candy. Disgusting. Once you get older, you realize all these sugary things that yeah, you love yeah. when you're a kid. They're just gross with horrible aftertaste. I'll still mess with an elephant ear at the... Uh, at the yes! Uh, yes. At the... At the Puyallup Fair. Oh, yeah. Yes. One, two. Oh, yeah. Swing and a miss. And don't forget those big scones. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And someone also sells like these huge plate of fries. It was so big, I gave it to a homeless person. Yeah, the uh, the uh there's there nothing better than the Puyallup Fair. Nothing better. I'm looking to go to the amphitheater soon. Limp Biscuit is going to be there. <sighs> I can't believe you're going to see Limp Biscuit. That's funny. I'm thinking about it. I'm not sure yet, but I'm only going if I have like a convincing group to go with. I'm not going to go alone. <laughs> I think you'll figure it out and end up going. Probably in some yeah, way. And it's not like yeah, I, really not like I like all of their music. I don't even, I only know like two of their songs, but I can tell that they can put on a show. For, for a Durst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, uh, yeah, have you ever noticed something about cotton candy though? It only comes in two colors, right? Blue and pink. Yeah, blue and pink. Yeah, blue yeah, and they pink. Should change That's it. it up. What about making like green lime flavor or something? Change yeah, it. You know up. What I mean? it, yeah, it's like it, it. But the thing about it is, it's always the same flavor. It's like that that bubble gum flavor. Yeah. Oh, yeah, debate. Gross. Best value concession food in T-Mobile. Oh. Uh, um. I don't know. You I'm going to say chicken strips and fries are probably your best oh, value you're ever oh. going to get. Everything yeah. else is like $9 for like a pizza, slice of pizza. No freaking thanks. Yeah, I mean, uh, but also the uh, the Kid Valley on the 100 level is also – and I love Kid Valley. Kid Valley is delicious. Kid Valley has fantastic value too. Yeah, but you know, but that's the thing is they don't actually make their burgers there. They, you know, they cook them somewhere else and they bring them in. And uh, by the time you get a Kid Valley burger at, on the hundred level, uh, they do their fries there and everything like that. But you know those burgers that they served at the uh, at the stand there on the hundred level is kind of gross. Hey. Just go to Chinatown. I was going to say uh, up on up on the three hundred level when you get to uh, Lookout Landing, there's a yeah, there's a there's a concession up there that uh, has you know has some value stuff there. I learned that a lot of those concession workers, they're just oh, gig no. workers. They're all off of apps and like on call kind of things. Cause you'll see different people there all the time. They just want to, that's like their second or third job. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. No, they, they, 
They don't call it look out with that. And no, they're having Munoz as a closer. I guess they're changing Stanek maybe be the closer on this one. Well, that's something to look yeah. at. Yeah, it uh it will Well, Stanek Stanek came out in uh uh that last game uh that last game against uh Toronto. They yeah. brought they brought Munoz into the tie and then they brought Stanek in to close that thing out. I think uh, Scott Service is figuring out that maybe this is the better combination. Probably. And now here's the 0-2 pitch. And a swing and a miss, strike three. See, I think we all agree that this is more of Munoz's role with the less pressure. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't seem to take the pressure well. Right. He had like Munoz, well, Yeah, but that was the that you know, that's when he came up, he was, you know, the the you know, the the uh, high leverage reliever six seven eight in the six seven eighth inning. Uh, and, uh, you know, Seawald was the, uh, Seawald was the guy. Closer. Yeah. And, uh, he was effective in that role and here we are now. And it's looking like he's, uh, getting off to a, a pretty solid start. Yeah. This is the Munoz that we would like to see. And now here's Cody Bellinger. Can he do damage on Andres Munoz hit probability at 22%. Here is the pitch. And now here's a fly ball to left field. Dylan Moore. He is there and he makes the catch. And yep. we've got two down already, and Munoz already pitching fantastic. And I mm -hmm. really do think after this inning, it's going to be Ryan Stanek, or I, I think yeah. it's going to be Ryan Stanek. Yeah, it's probably going to be Stanek. Uh, Jackie, hey, well, Robinson. it all depends. It all depends. Well, no, because here's uh, because that was uh, the strikeout was to Suzuki, and I think this is uh, Bellinger. Re Bellinger, yeah, and then who's after Bellinger? After Bellinger, it is going to be Moral. Moral, okay, yeah. So then, uh, yeah, it's probably going to be Stanek. Yeah, I probably assume. And it's going to be a 1-1 one, one count. Christopher Moral has three home runs right now, 10 RBIs, but he's 0 for 3 in this game. And here is the pitch, and that is low. And Munoz is, trying, is kind of losing just a bit. That was only like well, he's one. He's just staying away from him. Yeah, because he has a really big bat. Munoz has got that Jose Mesa kind of positioning. And now here's the 2 1 pitch, and that is fouled. 98 mile an hour fastball. You're not really seeing the 100, so maybe yeah. it he lost some little bit of zip. Maybe because it has something to do with that injury from last season. No, I think, I, you know. He can touch triple digits. I don't think that's his average. I think his his average is you know ninety eight to hundred. So it probably sits somewhere at ninety eight ninety nine. I remember when he threw that one hundred three. Even Vlad yeah. Guerrero was like, "Whoa, yeah, he can t do. He can touch triple digits." I remember back in the old days, touching triple digits was like, "What? He just did that?" And now it's yeah. like, "Ah, eh, it's just regular practice now." And now here. Yeah, is and a I don't, swing I, and a miss, strike three, and that will retire the side. Good outing by Andres Munoz. I'm not a fan of I'm not a fan of pitchers throwing max, throwing max heat. It puts so much stress on their arm and shoulder. Yeah, and there is someone that came up with a good point with like all the all these horrific injuries that are happening to these pitchers, and the best theory is more spin on the a lot more spin well, on the pitches and a lot more gas being thrown. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's it's max velocity, and you see a lot of these pitchers that are throwing hard all the time. Uh, and of course, pitching is a is an unnatural thing for you know human you know humans to do. And so with the and that that's the development now, where you know in the old days, usually a, a starter would be like ninety two to ninety four, uh, and uh, would have an arsenal of pitches. Uh, and, uh, you know, they didn't, you know, they didn't, they weren't constantly throwing gas. And today now the emphasis is on velocity, max velocity and, and high spin rates. Uh, and also when you couple, when you couple that with the fact that, you know, they don't do a lot of throwing between starts, you know what I mean? So, that, you know, I, I think it's, a, I think it's a combination of not keeping your, not keeping your arm loose between starts. And then also when you are starting, uh, you're, you know, basically however long in your game, I mean, you're going max, you're going max velocity. Oh, so, so they're not even like practice pitching, like in between the games. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, uh, like in the old days, you would have a bullpen between starts where you would, where you would throw a simulated, you know, for a, uh, however many innings. 
And then when you weren't throwing bullpens, you were taking long toss. You know what I mean? Where you would just oh, wow. keep that, you would just keep your arm loose. Then it's got to uh, be would, about, and then it comes down to like conditioning rather than like, yeah. So, Cause that, it seems that tanking your pitch count management can only do so much at this point. Right. I, I know a lot of people think that the pitch clock is, uh, is a part of the equation and that, that very well could be true. Um, but I, I, you know, that's the thing is I read a lot of, I read a lot of reports from doctors that do a lot of, uh, orthopedic doctors that do a lot of Tommy John surgeries. And you, you know, you're seeing the development down and down in the youth levels, high school travel teams, you know, uh, you know, these coaches are telling these kids that, you know, you have to go max, you have to go max. Uh, it, you know, if this is something that you want to do for a living, you're not going to be able to reach the big leagues, you know, topping out at 92, 93, you know what I mean? So you're, you're seeing it at that level where, at, at, even at signs of stress on the elbow, high school kids are getting Tommy John surgery and it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. And now that is a strike. And as we were getting back from the break, they showed some of the montage of Scott service as a catcher for the Chicago Cubs back in the nineties. Yep. And, uh, it was, it was Steve track, by the way, that was the question I asked you. Uh, I think last week when we were doing the broadcast, when, when Scott service was behind the plate, uh, he caught, he was behind the plate when McGuire hit his 70th home run, and the guy who threw it was Steve Traxel. Whew. Now here's the one-two, and that is low for a ball. We got a two-and-two two count. And he grooved it, too, by the way. <laughs> Ooh. And we're looking at a two-two, four-to-one. Mitch Garver's got to do something. And now here's the pitch. And a swing and a miss, strike three, down goes Garver, and we got a one out. Yeah, Mariners would love to get some more runs. I would love to see it just for insurance because three runs against this offense may not be enough. Now, granted, the top of the lineup is not there for now. And look, looking at Scott Service's career, he was 11 seasons in the majors, Cubs catching instructor, professional scout development, assistant GM to Jerry Depoto. This guy is not a coach. He's a scout. He's a front office yeah. guy. Yeah. So the, the you know the 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 uh, the relationship with Depoto was there before uh, it was he got right hired. There. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was already it was already established before he got hired as Mariner manager. So they're they're uh, they're buddies. So when you know when Mariner fans ask why Scott Service has been around so long, it's because yeah, Jerry Depoto. Yeah, and they're showing in, in the. Even the camera is admitting it the way they're doing because they just showed Jerry Depoto on the camera, and he's they're watching this game. Yeah. They're they best are best friends. friends. They really are. And now here they is the one-one pitch. Now that's a ground ball foul. Garver has fell off hard. Well, so far, but we'll see. Look Still, at all those uh, players that they got. They got J.P. Crawford from Gene Segura, Ty France, Andres Munoz. And Matt yeah. Brash, he was part of that. No, no way. He was not part of that Austin Nola thought, trade. No, he. Here's I thought. Bra I thought. I thought Brash was a draft pick of ours. No, he was off of the Padres. Fair enough. Right, now I'm going to take a look and see what that's all about. Brash is Canadian, by the way. He is shout indeed. Out, shout out to my Canadian friends. Yeah, here's the pitch, and that's a strike three call. And Cal Raleigh, even with his left side, doesn't do anything about it. And now we got two down. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Padres. So Brash was traded for Taylor Williams. Go wow. figure. And Taylor Williams is pretty much out of the league. So Mariners got a, mm -hmm. Mariners really fleeced the Padres in that year of 2020. Here's the pitch. Mm -hmm. Because the Munoz Tremel. France was off of literally like Austin Nola and Danny Altavia or something. What a steal. Dan, yeah. Dan Altavia. Uh, yeah. Dan Altavia. Yeah. Bullpen steal guy. Trade. And the Mariners nearly made the playoffs with all those kind of trades they made. And Taylor Tramiel is now a Dodger. And is he doing good? I have no idea. <laughs> and now here's Dylan Moore. He would love to extend this lead. With the 2 0, -oh, here's the pitch. Now, here is a line drive, and that is caught by Bellinger. We are going to the top of the ninth inning. It is still 4 1 Mariners, and hopefully, Mariners can figure this out. 
and get this done. And after this game, we will do the post game show immediately. So stay tuned right, for that. So, by the way, so Taylor Schmel has played in four games. He's got four at bats, no hits, one strikeout. Eek. Championship. Championship. Dodgers do strike out. They struck out more than anyone else except the Mariners. Yeah, the uh yeah, but you know, that's the thing. It's like he uh, he was brought in as uh he's brought in as depth. Uh yeah. you know, that's you, you know, that's normal. Uh, a guy like Taylor Tramell is always going to get picked up off of waivers and uh, you know. Yeah, why not? Why not? Makes sense. Makes sense. Can't wait for Brash's return. And hopefully he'll be at least Hopefully he won't do things like 2023 Andres Munoz. We want the 23 Matt Brash. Well, the 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 thing about it is it's going to be interesting to see how that bullpen re, uh, gets reshuffled uh, once Brash and uh, um, Santos Santos get bats. Thank you. Uh, now, is the knee jerk reaction going to from Scott Service going to be putting Matt Brash in as closer? Which here's the thing, like I haven't. I was thinking of Santos as a closer because as much as I love Brash, Brash is a very erratic pitcher. If, uh, you know, that's the thing. It's between now and then if Stanek, you know, if Stanek comes in and does a good job, you might as well just keep him right, keep him right where he is. And it seems like that's what Scott Service is trying to figure out because after seeing that Munoz kind of did terrible against Milwaukee and got out of the Blue Jays game on the skin of his teeth. Yeah. Yeah, and if it wasn't, you know, if it wasn't for a uh, Jorge Polanco crazy ass catch, that you know, that was the game right there. Would have been the game, and we would yeah. be having a totally different vibe. And maybe the Mariners we wouldn't even be winning this game because of killed vibes. And they're talking about Jackie Robinson stole home nineteen times during the regular season in his ten MLB seasons. Like, did he actually like steal all of them legit, or or some of them like wild pitches? I don't know what. Jackie was a badass man. And you know, uh, that's the thing. It's like, uh, uh, yeah, I, I would probably, I, I would probably, I would probably assume that, uh, the, all those 19 stolen bases were legit steals. And they're showing that, that game one world series highlight yeah. of Jackie Robinson stealing home and Yogi Berra really gave the umpire the piece of his mind. But now here is Stanek and we are correct. Let's see if yeah. he can be the closer. Here's Dansby Swanson. Check swing did he go? Yes, he did. Uh yes, with Brash, yeah, with Brash and Santos, uh, it probably is the best bullpen in the league. Uh, what do I think of Kevin uh, what do I think of T Apple TV broadcast? Good visuals, I'll give him that. Play by play, I haven't really paid attention to because I'm doing my own play by play. Don Trail Willis. Don Trail Willis with that weird windup, which some would say arguably killed his career. Now you know what you know what killed his career the fact that he didn't have secondary pitches, he was, he was just throwing gas. Guy. Yeah, he was throwing gas, and that pretty much just killed his career. Yeah, he got exposed, just like yeah, Felix. Sure. He threw gas way too long, and he threw way too much gas. I remember when Dontrell broke in, uh, he had a a big advantage over the league, and there was a uh, you know there was a lot of hype behind him too when he broke in. One two pitch. Uh, and that is a ball two and two. He pretty much carried that yep. Marlins team. Yeah. One of yeah. Well, it was also Josh Beckett. You forget like yeah, Beckett was on that team. Josh Beckett, Derek Bell, yeah. Mike, yeah. Mike Lowell, Mike Lowell. Yep. Juan Pierre, Juan Pierre, Luis, Cast the other Luis Castillo. Here yep. is the pitch. Oh, and uh, what's his uh, uh, what's his uh, the short the shortstop um, who ended up in Boston uh. And it's not Alex Gonzalez because that's a Cub. No, no, no. And now we're looking at the three-two pitch. And now here is a fly ball. No, that'll be okay. Dylan Moore is there, and he makes the catch. We got one down. I'll look it up too. Two thousand three Marlins. Don't forget Pudge was on that team as well. Mm -hmm. Alex Gonzalez. So there were two Alex Gonzalez at oh, at okay. a time. And Alex Gonzalez is one lucky guy. If it wasn't for Steve Bartman, he would have been the Steve Bartman of that a NLCS. 
that one killed it more than anything else. Here's the pitch. Like, imagine if Alex Gonzalez made that double play for the Cubs. Steve Barton is immediately forgiven. They forget about everything. Yep. And that was an easy, a routine double play supposed to be. And also that 2003 team uh, had a rookie, uh, had a rookie, uh, had a rookie infielder, third baseman by the name of Miguel Cabrera. Oh, head yeah. of the time. And yeah. he killed Roger Clemens. Yeah, he killed a lot of people. And now here is going to be the one, one pitch. And that is outside for a ball. In my terms of Stanek, he's very... He, I mean, he does have the walk problem, so there's that. The uh, the shortstop I was thinking about came a couple years later. It was Henley Ramirez. And Stanek is not is missing the strike zone again, 3-1. and one. As much as we were thinking about him being the closer, we also forgot that he walks quite a bit of batters. And now we're fine. looking at the 3-1. And now here is the pitch. And that is a strike. We're looking at a 3-2 count. Do you think the offense was better tonight? Just a little bit better. At least couldn't have been worse than what they did in the first two games of Toronto. So, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, but the the thing, even though that they only really had one inning where they got, where they got uh -huh. their runs, uh, the, the things that they did to get their runs, uh, cashing in with runners in scoring position, that was a W. Considering really that they was. hadn't really. Yeah. Yeah. Considering they've had a hard time doing it in regulation. Cubs are second in the league in runs per game. So they are really an offensive powerhouse and they have the highest exit below. So they got power in those bats. And yeah. now we're looking at a three, two count. And here's a fly ball to deep right field. Forget about that one. That was just absolutely launched. That's a home run by Michael Bush, his third of the season. And now we have a two run game. All of a sudden, you blink an eye, and next thing you know, it's a two run game. It's unfortunate. Really is. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, in a three, in, like usually in a three two situation, I'd be, I'd be like, I'm, I'm a, I'm a pitch behind you here. Uh, I'm curious to see if he throw that, see if he threw that split three two. And now we're looking. Yeah, no, at, it wasn't. It was it was a fastball, literally right over the heart of the plate. Meatball pitch. Yeah, and that is fouled away. And they're showing it on the replay again, and it was just absolutely launched. That was crush. Yeah, bright. Uh, uh, Kevin Kirby in the chat asking about Bryce Miller's start. Uh, he did exactly what he was supposed now, to do. Here's a today. fly ball to left field, and Dylan Moore makes the catch, and we got two outs. Yeah, you know Miller. Miller did exactly what he was supposed to do tonight. Keep the uh, keep the Chicago offense in check, uh, and he, uh, you know, he he, you know, he did his he did his job, man. He was locating very well uh, with his secondary pitches, and you know, there's a reason why, uh, you know, Miller went six and a third tonight. And now we're at two outs, and just want to say thank you very much for being on this show. 150 views total. Casamigos tequila. Those are very pricey. Now here's the pitch, and that is a foul ball. <laughs> Costum Hugo's yeah. is nice though. I haven't had one, but I know people that that like it. Yeah, it's good. I'm a tequila guy by nature, so yeah, Costum Hugo's is okay. It's not Don Julio, but not a lot is. Now here is the 01, and that is outside for a ball. We're looking at a one and one count. And yes, let's go. Let's let's put in that let's go Mariners on that chat. Let's do it. If you're not, you better be sending those donations for this for this uh, content. And now we're looking at the 1-1, and here's the pitch. And a swing and a miss and a nice 98-mile-an-hour fastball strike two. Down to the final strike. Bryce Miller with an absolutely amazing starting effort. Julio Rodriguez put in those two runs. You, Luis yep. Urias took one for the team. Ty France yep. got the hit. Yep. Munoz was fantastic as a setup man, which I think that's more of his role. And now we're looking at the one, two count. And now here is the one, two pitch on the way. And it's foul ball. I really was hyping that up. And now yep. we got a, we still got a one, two count. 
Fans in the background, they're all standing up. They want this game to end. They're doing the, oh, 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 I'm pretty sure. And now we are looking at the one-two count. And here's the pitch. And that misses it for the ball. Cal Raleigh's like, come on, I want to go home. We want to go home too. I want to go out for a walk in the neighborhood after this. I want to go to bed. <laughs> he wants to go to bed. Come on, umpire. Don't you want to go to bed? And now here's a 2-2. Two -two. And now here's a ground ball, and this should do it. The throw to second, toss to second, and the ball game is over. The Mariners will win this one. They have won two in a row off a 4-2 victory against the Chicago White, so White Sox. You know, you know what that means, though, right? They've won two in a row. That is what we like to call a winning streak. So let's get some hustle and jack it up a little. <laughs> it's not a, it's not a leg thing. <laughs> okay. Or a spiritual thing. Or a or heart a attack. Thing, or a heart attack. Who has heart attack? Me. Me. And he just collapses. Oh, poor guy. He definitely died on that bed. Like the moment he was like, I love this thing. I'm going away. The moment he jumps out, I yeah. think that's when his heart finally just went. I love this thing. I think I'm moving to England. And he's gone. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Lou Brown. Oh, yeah. We love him. Lou Brown. Lou Brown. But now we're going to let's get that post game show going because we got to get you to bed and we'll try to cap it to less than 10 minutes. <laughs> I'll do my best. But let's play a quick ad before we do a post-game show. SeatGeek is a mobile ticketing app for sporting events, concerts, and other events. They make the buying experience easier by the app ranking each ticket from 0 to 10 to see if you are getting a good deal, and you can see exactly where you are sitting. I regularly use that app, and I have had nothing but a fantastic experience with SeatGeek. Use my promo code ROOFTOPSPORTS to get $20 off of your first purchase. Link to the code, app, and website will be in the description, so take advantage, and thank you. Yep, and in case you guys just missed it, the Seattle Mariners won 4-2 to two against the Chicago Cubs, who came into this game being the top offense in this league, at least one of the top offenses. Great starting pitching by Bryce Miller. RBIs by Luis Urias, taking one for the team. A two-run RBI single by Julio Rodriguez. And Ty France adding some insurance. Great pitching by Andres Munoz. Little iffy pitching by Trent Thornton before Andres Munoz, and then Ryan Stanek with the save. Unfortunately, gave up the home run, but the Mariners did come away with it, and must I say, Bryce Miller did pitch a pretty good game, at least with four strikeouts and three walks. Take me your thoughts, Steve. Uh, well, this was exactly what you wanted to see. Uh, you know, the Mariners getting on the board early. Uh, they did. Um, Ty France. Uh, you know, had a nice little two for four performance tonight. Julio Rodriguez. And I said it right before the game. It was either going to be him or Garver that was going to need to have a big game, if not both. Uh, and, uh, you know, Julio checks in. Well, I mean, one for four today, but he did check in with a two RBI single. Uh, you know, Garver did get two walks tonight. So not a, you know, not a, uh, not a total waste of a game today, but for the most part, uh, you have to be thrilled with the result today. Bryce Miller was probably the player of the game for the Mariners tonight. Six and a third, four strikeouts. He did have three walks, but none of those walks came back to hurt him. Uh, and uh, he he was the he was the guy that uh, had to you know had to set the tone. He sure did. Uh, credit for the Mariners' offense for taking you know taking advantage of Jordan Wicks today. And you know we said it uh, we said it before the broadcast though that uh you know wicks will be trying to you know trying to be trying to do with a, a few things but well the one thing i liked was the uh, the mariners showed some patience uh you know they had the uh they had the you know they had the bases loaded early couldn't cash in did it again uh and this time they were able to do something with it uh and uh you know put three on the board uh and it stuck so congratulations this was a uh this was a win that was uh Kind of big considering that the Chicago Cubs are a, uh, a a very good team. Yeah, definitely impressive because they are able to get around like the Cody Bellinger. He went 0 for 3. You got Morrill, who was 0 for 4. Dansby Swanson 0 for 4. And Ian Happ yep. 0 for 3. So the Mariners pitching yep. really did handle them very well. And hopefully they can 
keep this going with Emerson Hancock tomorrow. Not really sure if it will happen, but you just never know. Maybe a momentum. Maybe this could get a confidence yep. thing going for this yep. team. Yep. But man, great pitching effort by the Mariners as they did do very well with the exception of like some issues like when we thought that on that yeah. inning this before the seventh inning stretch we thought that was out and we're yeah. thinking that maybe service should have challenged it and then you had a pitch where ryan stanick did let one get away but luckily it wasn't too bad stanick did Correct. make it up by getting those outs as quickly as possible yep. and other encouraging thing i also saw was polanco looked a lot more patient than what we were used to so i did like yeah. that he just wasn't swinging at everything but players to say that should deserve criticism is Cal Raleigh and still yep. Julio Rodriguez for, for yeah, the no. own headed swings and misses. Yeah, listen, uh, Cal did not have a good day. As a matter of fact, his first two at bats against Jordan Wicks uh, went down, you know, went down uh, looking looking pretty bad on that on those changeups. But I will say that you know, outside you're absolutely right. Outside of the RBI single by Julio. Uh, he also struck out twice and he also strike you know, those two strikeouts were, uh, were, uh, rather embarrassing. So, uh, you know, overall, uh, you know, you know, overall I was very pleased with the Mariner offense today. Uh, you know, in, in, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a difference of, uh, of a couple of games because a couple of games ago, uh, the top five, uh, in the order, uh, I think they were 0 for 14 in that, uh, second game of the Toronto series that, you know, that was definitely not going to cut it today. Uh, you know, you have what, uh, you know, you're, you get six hits from their, uh, from the top five guys in your order. So granted it's not great, but it's also not nothing. So that's exactly what you wanted to see, uh, the top of the order, uh, mixing it up, getting on base and doing the things that, uh, they're going to have to do in order for this lineup to get going. Yeah. And hopefully if if we really can, let's try Polanco at second and Julio at third. See what happens. But at least Ty France did pretty well as a three hitter today. Mitch Hanniger at least started something to get that bases loaded walk in for Urias. And Urias yep. actually did pretty well defensively. No one really talks yeah. about, it, but yeah, some pretty good, good defense play. today. Yeah, he he made uh, he made a nice grab in uh, nice grab in foul territory. Uh, you know, he made a couple of nice stops defensively at third base. Uh, yes. Very, uh, you know, very, uh, very good point. Luis Arias actually played uh, played a good uh, played a good third base tonight, which is which is good to see because I remember at the start of the season, everyone's like, "Is Urias and Rojas going to work? Is it going to work? Is it going to work?" And aside from the Boston series, you haven't really seen much issues out of them as of now, at least. Yeah. I mean, they have been, I think, doing pretty well considering that Mariners don't have Suarez anymore. Yeah, and now well, let's yeah. Well, I was going to say, uh, you know, it it really is a true platoon because you you generally see Josh Rojas uh, playing versus uh, playing versus right-handed pitching, and of course, you know, tonight and tomorrow, uh, lefties on the hill. So yeah, you you're going to see more. Uh, you're going to see more Dylan Moore uh, and more Luis Urias. So, um, but you know, overall, uh, I thought Urias played pretty decently tonight. I thought I thought so too, and also contributed by getting an RBI. Yep. Yep. And as we look hit into tomorrow, yeah, hit by pitch. And as we look into tomorrow, we've got Emerson Hancock and the Japanese man's Sota Imanaga. Did I yep. say that right? I don't know. Uh, Imanaga, yeah, I think Imanaga. so. I, yeah, I, I, I'm sure there's like some pronunciation we're not we're not getting getting right, but yeah. Uh, and he's uh, he's been very good so far. Has yet to give up a run in two starts, uh, and he is. Uh, this is going to be a challenge tomorrow. And it, it, you know, it was nice to get this uh, to get the series started off uh, in a uh, winning in side a, uh, on a winning side. Uh, tomorrow is going to be a challenge, man. And, and it's going to be one of those games where you know the Mariners would be lucky if they're going to score two off of uh, off of uh, Imanaga. Uh, but uh, then again, this is just like tonight, uh, where it was, uh, uh, where Bryce Miller had to set the tone. Tomorrow, it's going to be it's going to be Emerson Hancock, and he's got a lot of he's got a lot to uh, he's got a lot to work through. To you know, he he needs to rebound. He really it does need to rebound because he's working with a eleven point four two ERA and yeah. nearly a two WHIP. 
seven strikeouts, two walks, but three homers. Yep. And the, considering that Imanaga is going to be a lefty, you would think that you're probably are not going to see the left side of Cal Raleigh and Dominic Canzone due to the, the tendencies of Scott service yeah. to do that matchup thing. So I expect to see yeah. Dylan Moore to get more action Polanco yep. on his right side. So another reason sure. why based on how he constructs the lineup based on just matchups alone, this will be a challenge unless yeah. take, maybe take a risk and let Canzone see what he can do. Especially if I think we, uh, on this one, I go off of talent on this one, then matchups. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I would I would uh, put your best lineup out there. Uh, that you know that being said, I wouldn't even mind seeing uh, Luke Raley uh, get some at bats versus lefties tomorrow. I, I will. At-bats. Well, he he desperately needs at bats. He's only got like what, uh, 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 like ten exactly. plate appearances. Not, not, even like, played, like, not even played enough. Yeah, yeah, he's like he's got like you know that's that's what's head scratching because I mean. You know the what? What are you gonna do with Rayleigh? I mean, he's only got like something like ten plate appearances so far in the season, uh, and it's you know, it, it literally makes no sense to me. You know why? You know why? Are, why do you have him on the roster if you're gonna keep him sit? You're you're keep him sitting for six days a week, and it's not like you can't figure out a way to get him in the lineup because you can. Uh, you can you know you can play him. You uh, you can play him in right field and move you know Hanniger to the DH if you want to give him at bats. Same thing with uh, same thing in left field with Dom Canzone. Uh, and it's not like you're really taking away at bats from anybody uh, in left field, right field, or at DH because you know what those guys are still going to get their five starts per week. So you have to give Luke Rayleigh some at bats just to see what you just to see what you have. Yeah, especially against a a really good pitcher, and it's and it's not like considering what the matchup is and considering what the betting odds may be, which may not be in the favor of the Mariners. What do you got to lose? Like just do well, put in anything well, good. Well, when you look at really splits, he, you know, he's hit lefties at every single level. So it's, you know, there, there has to be, you know, there has to be some plan with Rayleigh, uh, because even, you know, even doing what you're doing, you can't even count on them as being, you can't even, count on him uh, coming off the bench to being that home run guy off the bench, you know, against righties, you know, that uh, are just coming at you with pure power. You you can't expect anything out of them considering you're not really even using them. So uh, something's got to give there, but uh, you know, I'm looking forward to tomorrow because I, I want to see the next progression against it, you know, against a good pitcher. You know what I mean? What I want to see is this offense, uh, do the exact same thing off a pitcher that I would probably assume everybody, uh, everybody just assumes is going to dominate us. So uh, that's, that's what gets my, you know, that's what gets my blood pumping for, uh, you know, for tomorrow. Yeah. Let's, let's really look forward to it. And like we agree, it's a good thing. The Mariners got this one out of the way, desperately needed it. And hopefully, hopefully Scott service can make the right decisions. I know, I know it's going to be like Dylan Moore and like all the righties because of lefties, but <laughs> If if, if Zebby Savala if if Zebby is in the lineup tomorrow, you know that the Mariners are punting that game. Which I don't like that idea. Yeah. I really which no, is not, was like well, the last which yeah. is yeah, which is not smart considering the Mariners have not gotten off to a good start. The last thing you yeah, want to do, do not is punt games. It is is punt, you know, punt away a game. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's not do that. But I, I think we covered as much as we could. And in summary, great pitching by Miller. Yep. Julio stepped up, Ty France stepped yep. up. Urias took one for the team. Bullpen was a bit meh, but they put like Trent Thornton. Yep. But Munoz did yeah, good. You know, yeah, Trent Thornton. I'll, I'll say this. Trent Thornton had his moments. Munoz was was very good. Uh, and I thought Stanek was good outside of the home run. Outside of the home run. So this is probably, I'd like to say this is the best stress-free win of the entire season so far. Yep. I yep. think it is. So. 100%. 100%. We're all happy. We're all satisfied, happy about this win. But that's going to do it for the post game portion of this show. You can obviously rewatch it over and over again, as this will be the post game show. And that will do it. And hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification. And thanks for watching. And now let's get into the comments and see if there's anything meaningful to, re- to look at before we, we go to sleep. And I will say. <clears throat> I am planning to be at this game tomorrow. Not sure yet. Uh, Steve, how about you? What's your schedule like? Because I know once you're off, you're well, gone tonight. Well, 
Well, let's see. What's my schedule like? Uh, I plan on doing nothing tomorrow, and it's going to be everything I hoped it would be. That's that's my plan for tomorrow. I got the day off, and I am not doing a goddamn thing. I might play some FIFA, and that's going to be like the highlight of my day. Well, hopefully, this will hopefully joining for another color commentating will be yeah. the highlight with the Mariners pulling the upset. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I, I I would probably assume that I'll I'll be back on the call tomorrow. As as long as I can make it, so I'll keep you guys updated and. Thank you very much for being on this show. And it was a pretty good show of 157 views. I'm, I'm glad I was able to take away maybe a couple few dollars of Apple revenue away. So thank you very much for being on here. And thank you for the high level of engagement. Like it's maybe I, yes, I built this content, but you guys did as well as much as Steve and, and myself did. So please keep supporting this channel as best as you can. And we are going to go to sleep because Steve's got to go to sleep. I got to cut videos and everyone have a good night and go Mariners.